Hello, everyone. Is this working? Uh, welcome, Post Perez. Yes, we're back. It, it's uh, it's Post Perez for December of 2023, and uh, you know that means that means year in review time, and and we're gonna we're gonna talk about the year of 2023 in Japanese professional wrestling. Incredible, and, and and joining me as always nowadays, it's Karen Peterson. Karen, how are you? <laughs> like a bad penny, I keep coming around. That's no, right. No, I'm I'm a little bit sick, but I'm gonna try to power through it just for everybody here. That's right, because we got a lot of things to talk about about 2023 <laughs> in Japan. And uh, joining us, and you can't see him on the YouTube screen because I don't know why. Because uh, one, he doesn't have enough <laughs> bandwidth to to be on the camera and then he, 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 his, his name doesn't even fucking appear on our screen <laughs> but from from one of my favorite podcasts and one of the, the preeminent authorities on all things japanese wrestling from the eastern lariat it's dylan fox no stranger to post perez dylan thank you for joining us here and and how have you been Ooh, i'm a disembodied voice you can't see me i don't know why Streamyard hates me. I apologize to all the listeners out there. Uh, they did see me before the show, so they can at least attest that I'm not like, you know, hiding my identity or anything like <laughs> that. I'm a real person. I promise. Uh, and I, first of all, I just got to say thank you so much, WH, having me on. I, it was great meeting you, Karen, for the first time too. Just like I told you off the air, I always respected yeah. your work and your love of Joshi thank Perez. You so much. Um, you know. I just want to say, and it's a shame. I was, I really actually tried to impress you. Last time I had to get cut off camera, I wore my Vancouver Grizzlies throwback jersey to represent Canada. But with you, Karen, I know how much history you've had with NXT. So I wore my Oscar shirt uh, that oh, my sister got yay! me. Uh, so I, I represent NXT that. now. Uh, we had to do that. Absolutely. I want to fit in. I want to be, uh, get off on the right foot to you, all the listeners, and uh, hopefully everybody who knows me. From the Eastern Lariat enjoys my special appearance on the show because it's a lot of fun. Uh, I've always had good responses from the Post fans out there. So thank you guys for always welcoming me. And thank you, WH, one of my great friends for years now. And uh, hopefully we have a great show for everybody. Listen, it, it's, it, it won't be like a three-hour show. Like that time I came out, I came back to my hotel in Yokohama after watching Big Japan Pro Wrestling and seeing some deathmatch light tube shed. And, and I, we talked about it for like, Oh, Three yeah. hours. Remember that? That was that. Good times. Good times. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna have fun talking about. Yeah, it. I remember when Hideki trolled uh, Abdullah Kobayashi too? That's right. I was at the Big Japan uh, uh, Nakano Broadway store, and, and Hideki Suzuki came, uh, came to. I went to their merchandise store, and, and Hideki Suzuki said to point at Abdullah Kobayashi and said, "He is comedy wrestler." I said, "Why? Well, no, he's he's very." Uh, it's very dangerous. He does the light tubes and stuff, and he's like, "No, no, comedy wrestler." He also took my uh, uh, and he uh, looked very uh, sad. Well, he he he. I think Hideki Suzuki bullies him a lot, maybe in real life. But you know, Hideki Suzuki also took my my photograph that my me and my friend took with the the astronauts, and but we weren't supposed to. It's a good thing, uh, you know, the big Japan's big boss didn't see Hideki Suzuki taking a photo without us without us paying for it. We did not pay for that photograph that I had with the astronauts. And then uh, he said, don't. He just give me your phone. He took the picture. He, he doesn't care. Hideki Suzuki, you know. But we're not here to talk about Hideki Suzuki. We're here to talk about 2023. But before we get to 2023, we're going to kind of go like month by month, big shows, kind of the big picture. And and if, if we think about smaller details that need to be embellished, we'll, we'll, we'll do the embellishing then. But let's talk about a couple of notes before we get into the year in review and and, and recently, the big news is that, you know, you know, Ghetto, Dick Togo, Bushi Road, New Japan for Wrestling decided, you know how, you know, this Ren Narita guy, we need, to, we need to heat this guy up. You know, we need to strap a fucking rocket to his back. You know what we're going to do? We're going to put him in the fucking house of torture because look what that did for Sho Tanaka. Sho Tanaka's been, everyone talks about him. Everyone talks about how great his matches are. He's won the IWGP. Junior heavyweight title multiple times since joining HOT. Wait a sec. None of that is true because HOT sucks. And Ren Narita going into HOT, I feel so sorry for that kid. He was he he was gonna be like he was gonna be a star, man, if you just stuck him being the wrestler dude. You know what I mean? The the shooter guy. It, like you, you contrast him with like Suji, 
with like fucking Shoda, and then you got you got the strong style guy. But no, let's put him in House of Torture. This is bullshit. This is so stupid. Karen, what are your thoughts? <laughs> so off air, WH and Dylan got a very, very candid, growling, angry scream from like the bottom of my soul over this. I was mad when it happened to show. I'm doubly mad that it's happening to Ren. I don't know why this is happening. I don't know what the purpose is. House of Torture. Does it need to be this? Give me my sons back. Let them be baby faces and wonderful and show the world that they can actually wrestle. Please and thank you. I just, I can't anymore. I think no, it's no. the therif the Theraflu's like kicking in, man. I'm just, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm done. It's, they've become my toxic ex and I want to break up with them. I'm very upset right now. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Dylan, but don't, don't most New Japan fans you know, act like, you know, like wrestling, in-ring wrestling. They're not really big fans of this, like, sports entertainment stuff, are they? I don't know what you're talking about, WH. I mean, this is this is Gato's vision of pro wrestling. This is Gato's maximum capacity for pro wrestling right now, and he gave it to us in full throttle with the House of Torture, with Rin Narita, the man who idolized Shibata. He had to go to the House of Torture to ruin That's my right. life once again, much like StreamYard. Much, much like Show Tanaka, no one talks about this poor fella. No, I for, forget all those, forget all the accolades he he was getting, all the attention he was getting with those matches with Shinga Takagi. No, no, that's not what we need from Show Tanaka. We need we need him to be a, a cowardly heel who uses what's his weapon of choice? The wrench is that his weapon of it, choice? It, it is a wrench, yes. Right, ridiculous. What I, now? Does each <laughs> member of Hot? have 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 a gimmick weapon like rent like Ren Narita's what's his weapon going to be Dylan what do you think I think he needs a screwdriver he's going to be just as annoying as Don Callis now at AEW oh, maybe but maybe Don's got the trademark on the screwdriver so maybe I don't know what Karen what do you think what what's Ren's weapon of Ooh. choice going to be I, I've seen speculation that it'll probably either be a chair or a crowbar, or I don't know if you, because you taught, you didn't teach in the public school system. So in Japan, like in elementary schools and middle schools, they do what they kind of call like a a, a suspicious person drill. And it's a, it's like a six foot pole with like a, a rounded hook on the end. So if somebody dangerous comes in the building, people are supposed to take this, this pole arm basically and pin them against the wall. It looks like a trident with like the middle prong oh, missing. I, I I know what you're talking about. I didn't yeah, teach it so, in public school system, no, but I know what you're talking about. But people are joking that that's what he's going to come out with. It's gonna. Yeah. It's not going to be anything cool. It's not going to be like a barbed wire bat or you know, you know, fists of you know glass. It's going to be something stupid that they can easily pack on the bus. You and know, you know, it makes I me would, sad. If I was booking this shit, I I would say you know let's let's just go all the way with trolling the fans. And his weapon of choice is going to be a red towel like Anoki. He's going to choke people with the red strong style towel of Anoki. In fact, he's going to have one of Anoki's towels. They're going to break break into a museum, a pro res museum, the Anoki Museum, if there is such a place. And they're, they're, they're going to go past the skull with the jaw, and they're going to go straight for that red towel, and they're going to use it to choke people. He's going to use a choke. He's going to win the IWGP Intercontinental Championship when they bring that motherfucker back and he's going to use the red towel to win. My prediction. That's my prediction for 2024. It's my hot hot take. But uh, <laughs> the, the post viewership, I apologize for the sad sad look on my face. I'm go I'm going through I'm going through everything I went through with show turning on yo. I'm going through it with Ren and Show to Umino right now. I don't, I'm not having a good time. I don't want to be here. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna deviate yeah. from New Japan. What's oh, sorry, going go on here? You've you've got Karen wanting this guy to have fist of glass. Yeah, I was gonna say you got Karen wanting this man to have a fist of glass, and you want to turn him into a criminal. What's gonna happen to Rin Narita now? We've lost we've lost our minds. This is what Gato does to our minds. No, no, no. you know you know what? I'm 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 not calling him Gato anymore. I'm just gonna call him Vince. His name is Vince now. I'm not calling him Gato anymore. He he's Vince, as in Vince <laughs> Russo. He is the Vince Russo of Japan. Yeah, may, may, maybe he has to share that title with Nosawa Rangai. 
but he he's like Vince. When I talk about Vince, I'm not talking about Vince Russo or Vince McMahon. I'm talking about Ghetto. But but let's deviate from New Japan. We're gonna come back because we're we're gonna talk about uh, we're gonna quickly preview uh, New Japan's Wrestle Kingdom 18 card. But we're, I want to talk about another show, another company uh, that's Pro Wrestling Noah, and and they're gonna have uh, a, the the New Year 2024. Uh, what's the date on that show? January. Jillian? Oh, sorry. No, go January second. January second, and and that that's yeah, gonna be right. headlined. That's gonna be headlined by. Not by Keno defending uh, his GHC heavyweight title against. Uh, it's it, is it against Manabu Soya? Yes. Instead, we're gonna have a quote unquote dream match: Naomichi Marafuji versus AEW superstar Kota Ibushi because they couldn't get anyone from WWE to come back this year in 2024 at least. Um, so they thought we'll go to AEW. We'll we'll get. Kota Bushi, because you know Kota Bushi is on fire in AW. Kota Bushi is like turning heads or in AW because he's having all these amazing singles matches and and can, buying for the title that that MJF holds. Wait a sec, none of that is true either, is it? <laughs> Instead, so we're just gonna have this dream match. I I, I you know like sure, I I will legit say that this is a a legit dream match. But two years in a row now. Their their big January show is not going to be headlined by a title match. What does that say? What they think about that title, Dylan? What what are your thoughts? I just think that it's a terrible thing. The way they've handled it is so stupid that they keep making the same mistakes over and over. Um, it really is made worse by the fact that the president seems to really love talking a lot uh, in, in the public. I kind of compared him on the last Eastern Lariat. He reminded me a little bit of Shiraishi with some of the stuff he's saying. Uh, the former All Japan owner, he was talking about Kaito has no fans, and that's why he was sitting in New Japan. And now he's talking about, uh, you know, he doesn't believe in these guys. And now you've got, a, you know, Marafuji's a legend. And that's true that he is a legend and he deserves props. But it just, it's repeating the same mistakes over and over again from last year where we had the same deal. And this time it's with a less, um, you know, Soya, a good worker, nothing against him at all. And it, they have a story with it. But the fact of the matter is this, he's never been a main event player. So it really just, it was problems on top of problems with how they've handled this pretty much. And par for the course for Noah, at least you have Muto spitting mist on babies and stuff now. That's right. Great Muta is back, not in the ring, just grabbing baby dolls for TV vignettes. Like he's he's on a farm and he decides I'm gonna spit. He finds like abandoned babies and and spits his 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 green mist at them. Wonderful stuff, Karen. What do, what do you think about Marafuji versus Ibushi as as a match? And then like how it's it's gonna headline this Noah show instead of the GHC Heavyweight Title match. It was one of those things where I, I've been saying for, you know, several years now with AEW working with, you know, DDT and then bringing over to Kesha and bringing the Tosh Tokyo Joshi girls over that at some point they needed to work with Noah. But when I meant that, this was not what I had in mind. I, I once again, my, 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 my Pudoras monkey's paw has backfired. Um, I like Mara Fuji. I like Ibushi. They're talking how this is like a big, like 13 years in the making sort of match dream match. If it was Mara Fuji and Ibushi 13 years ago, I might be super stoked about it. I I just don't know how I feel about it main eventing the show when you're in basically putting the G, the GHC championship as the semi main event when that's your company's top title. I, I never feel good when they when they when they bump the the, the main title from the main event of a card. I want to be excited about it, but does this also mean that starting now, Noah talent is going to start showing up in AEW? I don't know. I just, I don't know what, what the direction is or if it's just a one-off to, you know, try to move more tickets. I, I, I mean, for me, I, I, I don't see like, to me, like I understand why they do it because they feel like, you know, Soya versus Keno is not going to draw. Uh, and during that week, we're talking about two days before Wrestle Kingdom, right? So, yeah. And every company is having a show in the in the Tokyo area, right? Whether it's at Cork and Hall, whether it's in Shinkiba, it's in like you know Sumo Hall. I don't know if they're anyone. I don't think anyone's running in Sumo Hall, but yeah, like, the, Noah's running Ariaki Arena, so it is a very spacious venue. Yeah. So I, 
Will that sell? I, I don't know. It depends what they price the tickets at. I think most people are going to go want to go see the, the, the New Japan show, like with with you know Naito versus uh, Sonata and, and and Brian Danielson versus Okada too. Like I, if I had a choice and I had and I was on a budget, which a lot of people are going to be on a budget, I'm going I'm yeah. going to the I'm going to Wrestle Kingdom, even though I, I say we'll never go back to the Tokyo Dome again, and yeah. I probably never will because I hate that building, but. This this to me is like indicative of the problem. And, and Dylan, you said like the the, the president of of Cyberfight, not not Takagi, right? Not Sashiro Takagi. No, no, it's uh, it's Takeda, the the president that's going off in public right now. And he's saying Kaito has no fans. Well, this is what happens when you when you make the guy who's like supposed to be your fucking Okada look like your fucking uh fucking you know Izuka, you know, you fucking jobber. You turn this kid into a like this. This is the guy who's like so talented, and he's and he, you turned him into the jobber in the last two two years. To Mudo, you 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 basically sold him down the river to to New Japan and Okada. He got he got buried every time he faced Okada. He got buried. Well, you could have made a shitload of money, and I will talk about this as we review twenty twenty three because I think Okada versus Kaido Kiyomiya is the biggest blunder of the year. In the Japanese wrestling in 2023, the way it was handled, Absolutely. the way it was like Absolutely. prostituted in 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 everything that they did together, unbelievable. This should be headlining Wrestle Kingdom 18. This should be for Kaido Kiyomiya's IWGP World Heavyweight Title. That, that I yeah I called I said that during the G1 before the G1 happened. That's what that's what fucking Wrestle Kingdom should be. It, instead, it's also now going to be. Not the IWGP Heavyweight Title that's gonna headline. By the way, if they do that fan vote gimmick again, I'm guarantee you Okada versus Danson is going to main event that show. And I and I'm here for the comedy of of all that. To be quite honest with you, but um, yeah, I don't know. Like I also I I think Noah in the last year, two years, the last two years has really done a disservice to their GHC Heavyweight Title. They they don't have like I, I will say this, Jake Lee brought a lot of stability to that belt during his reign this past year. But like, but then, you know, like to, to have Keno defend against Soya instead of like building up someone like, I don't know, like Masakita Mia would be someone I, I would have built up in the last year and try to make like a big match between those. And there's so much history between those two. I think that would have been, if you built it right, can be such a much more like intriguing match in, in ring, especially. And Kita Mia has like more of cachet with no fans, I feel. There is a possible singles match between Kitami and Ishii that might be added to this card as well. And I think the other thing they're banking on is that Tanahashi versus Zack are both, they're in a tag match. Like in Wrestle Kingdom, they have the New Japan uh, Television Championship match, but on the Noah card, they have Wrestle Symphony where Zack's tagging with Ogawa and Tanahashi's tagging with Hayata for some reason. I don't know. But um, I think they're possibly leaning on the, the popularity of both Zach and Tanahashi in that respect as well to help draw some new Japan fans over to the Noah show on the second. Listen, listen my hatred of Hayata is, is yeah, well, I, uh, I know he's one of your, your absolute favorites, but, but listen, if he, if he can convince Tana, Tanahashi to wear baggy, baggy vinyl pants with one leg rolled up, I guy liner, I, I, he needs I, guy liner. I, 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 I will, <laughs> I will like maybe make that my early match of the year for 2024. <laughs> if Hayata can get Tanahashi to dress just like him, that might be, you know, plus plus is uh his pretty deadly uh you know tribute gear that that Tanahashi wears these days. I need those sleeves to go. Dylan, what do you think about Tanahashi's pretty deadly uh, uh tribute gear that he's been wearing for a while now? Well, well listen, uh, you know Tanahashi. I will never disrespect that man. He is a wrestling genius and a style genius. I aspire to have my hair be as nice as him if I get to the salon one day. But let me ask you guys this. I think an even more important question to kind of bring it back to Noah for a second. What are your opinions on Jake Lee's top hat? Listen, Jake Jake Lee needs to go come talk to me. I will design a new fucking look for this guy because what he wears to the ring has got to go. That he he looks like low rent. He looks like fucking dollar store undertaker. With this new fucking look, I thought his his previous entrance gear was bad. Where where he looked like he was like he was like trying to cosplay as like his favorite like fucking uh, Renaissance fucking manga character, trying to romance the fucking you know waitress at the fucking pub or something like that. You know, like no, he's he's now now I'm fucking low rent Undertaker. 
dude, come on. Just be a shooter, man. Just be a fucking MMA fighter, for God's sakes. That's that's all you need to be, Jake. That's all you need to be, bro. Anyways, Jared, what are your thoughts on Jake Lee's top hat? Uh, he's got great hair. He doesn't need the hat. All right. We, we, we just... <laughs> oh. We, we, we're just, we sometimes, we, we're going to, Karen's nickname going to 2024 is Karen Political Peterson. Because uh, she, she. Hot she, takes <laughs> Peterson. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, let's, let's move on before we get to 2023. We're just going to take a quick look at Wrestle Kingdom 18. I'm, I'm going to run down the card and then I'm going to just ask your thoughts and then I'll give my thoughts on the show. What we're looking for and such. Uh, so Wrestle Kingdom 18, January 4th, the Tokyo Dome. Uh, on the card will be Shingo Takagi defending his never open weight championship against Tamatanga. Amazing. Uh, Hiromu Takahashi taking on El Desperado for Hiromu's IWGP junior heavyweight title. Uh, the Bullet Club War Dogs. Just get rid of that Bullet Club part. Just call yourself the War Dogs because Bullet Club is shit. Clark, Clark Connors and Drilla Maloney for the champions. The IWGP junior heavyweight tag team champions will take on Catch-22, TJP, and Francesco Akira. Uh, uh, Bishamon, Hiroki Goto, and, and Yoshihashi, may, maybe the tag team of the year, will take on the uh, World Tag League winners. Who, who are the World Tag League winners? Did we get winners yet? I, no, I have not been This coming Sunday, no, Bruce Lord and I will cover it for post. Whenever with no it's English available. commentary. With no uh, English it, commentary. It's supposedly going to be available shortly after the broadcast but i will probably watch it in japanese for the sake of time and yeah. not spending my entire sunday watching I, wrestling I, I am gonna contact bruce lord and say listen bruce big bruce brew dog you don't need english commentary my friend just do old, just go old school okay old school is you get a seventh generation copy of this fucking match of this fucking show and you just watch it with the with the native natural japanese commentary you know, Dylan, what do you think about no fucking English commentary on this fucking show? I just don't understand what the deal is with the new world system they have going on now. They made a lot of mistakes, in my opinion, you know, from the first place where they took all the stuff off from before. They, the matches, the shows aren't in one file now. The matches are separate. Who's running this crap right now? I know Bushi Road has more money to, to do this. You can't tell me. You're going backwards. Like, this is not a time-traveling service that we're a part of in wrestling. You don't go backwards. You go forwards. We have the English commentary, which, you know, historically, I haven't always been a fan of. I usually watch in Japanese more often than not anyway. But for the grand scheme of things, the fans, you need to have the English commentary. We saw a lot of negative comments on it, and deservedly so. I feel bad for the new guy, uh, came in, Walker. Uh, he's coming in right when things are in disarray, and you have all these problems. It's, it's crazy. Listen, they just all they had to do, all Bushy Road had to do was just rip off Cyber Fights, you know, uh, fucking platform. Because because Wrestle Universe is an awesome platform. And Wrestle, they gave the, the, the smart thing that Cyber Fight did was when they launched the new version of Wrestle Universe, they gave it away for free for three months. They let people play with it, they let people see if they could break it, and it was no problem. Now, for me, I'm a Mac user. So in the last month, there's been nothing but problems since they've launched this. I get it. I can have it work on my MacBook, but now I can't stream from my MacBook to my, my smart TVs. It's so incredibly frustrating. I, I I love the what they're trying to do, but being told that, oh, just find another device. I don't have a Windows computer just lying around my house that I can just switch to because I'm an iPhone user and I'm a Mac user. So it's one of those things where I'm just like, it's frustrating because I feel like they're they they may have put a lot of thought into it, but I feel like they could have done it in a better way and include Stardom World in it somehow. Like I've it just it just burns my biscuits, guys. Like I I want to, I want to support them, I want to love this, but I am so frustrating uh, frustrated at the user experience right now. Okay, so. Dylan, who, who, who's going to be the World Tag League winners? What, what's your prediction on that? Uh, you know, it could be anybody. They put so little care to it. The, the results are kind of random. My guess would be that TMDK would be the one to get it now, but I have no clear vision. They've eliminated half of the people. I thought it would 
be Rin and Shoda, actually, at first, but they obviously had different plans that we've already talked about for that. Uh, so I'll say give Team DK the rub here. Put them again against Bishamon because we haven't had enough rematches on this show either in this Wrestle Kingdom show. That's one thing we're missing. Karen, what's, what's your prediction for World Tag uh, League winners? I mean, I also would like it to be TMDK because I want them to actually win the belts this time. <laughs> I still remember when they won the GHC Tag Team Championships back in 2015. It's beyond time for them. For sure. I let, Let's go with TMDK, and, and maybe it's time for Bishamon to, to finally let go of these belts and, and TMDK to have a run with Zach. You know, as the you know the the world television champion. Speaking of which, Zack Saber Jr. defending his world television championship against Hiroshi Tanahashi. Um, that, that should be interesting. I always like this pairing. Um, Will Will Osprey, the champion of champion of what we don't know because they're, they're going to give him a new belt that he's going to vacate or lose. I think he's going to lose on this show because he's going to AEW. Uh, we'll take on David Finley, who's probably going to win the belt, uh, and John Moxley in a three-way match. Now, I like David Finley, and and I and I think he needs a big rub, but I I don't think Will Ospreay and John Moxley need David Finley to be in this match. To be quite honest with you, I think it would be a better match. It was just Ospreay versus Moxley in a dream match, but it, it is for the uh, a new belt that they say they're going to create, and. Uh, yeah, Karen, let's go with you first. Uh, what uh, do you think it's the IC belt coming back? It would be my personal preference if it was. However, I don't think if they're like they're making a new belt, they're not gonna they're not gonna raise up the beautiful old white strap belt. They're gonna give it a new design, probably that's more akin to Sonata's uh, World Heavyweight Championship. Um, the mo- I, I was excited for the Osprey Moxley rematch. But the moment that David Finley showed up, I'm like, oh yeah, this guy's the project now. And that was that was kind of also the moment I figured that Osprey was leaving for something else. I was surprised that they announced his signing at AEW this soon prior to the dome. I would have waited until he lost at the dome or waited until New Year's Dash, where you know, where he could, you know, feel like he's being sent packing by Finley. This just feels like they're trying to force feed David Finley into the situation. And I like Finley. I think he's a great guy. I do. I agree. I, I like the heel makeover. Oh yeah. But I don't, I don't know what, like very much like house of torture. I don't know what the end game is right now. Other than ghetto getting a paycheck because it, it feels like it's not about Finley. And that's the frustrating part about it. Right. Well, no, it isn't. He's like, ghetto needs to be on television. It's not enough. He's the booker. He needs to be with a the quote unquote, top heel of the company but dylan uh, what 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 title do you think they're going to unveil in this three-way match well first of all karen totally hit the nail on the head about gato like typical gato mo for many years now from the jay white run all the way to this he just can't help himself uh, I don't know what kind of plan they have here i just know that, that angle was so stupid when they broke the titles with the hammer uh, I thought that was something out of like women of wrestling level like move there you had there. What were they thinking? Uh, I don't understand it. But in my opinion, I think they need to go to a di- different route. Don't bring back the IC title. Call it something completely different, something we've never seen before. Maybe call it the South American title instead of the North American title. We've never seen that before. And why does it too? Why is it that every title must be determined by a country? Or you know a landmass yeah. of some sort. Why can't we have some kind of you know, you know something they else? Should, to the they t- should do what Tony Khan did and create like a Pacific title, like the Atlantic Belt that they've now renamed to what the International Title. Okay. Stop. Or or a trip. We have a Triple Crown Championship at home. Oh, that's true. They they renamed that. Oh yeah, no, I don't recognize that as a triple crown. That's, that's <laughs> um, but yeah, th- there you go. Hey, uh, Brian Danielson, <laughs> this is Kazuchika Okada in the semi-main event, which is uh, newsflash, everyone. It's actually going to be the main event of this show. Not maybe uh, not maybe not match placement, but in everyone's heart. I got a question. Yes, how is Danielson doing in that tournament, that Continental Classic tournament right now? Is there the possibility that he could be the Triple Crown champion going into this match with Okada? Sure. 
I, I guess I have no idea. I'm not I'm not following. Dylan, are you following the Continental Classic? Sounds like a breakfast. That's buffet. right. You know I am WH. <laughs> it, it does. Hey, it sounds like a great breakfast display. That's hey, that's what Mark Briscoe said in his promo. He says, I eat continental breakfast, so I'm in this tournament. Uh, but regardless, yeah, he's not eliminated, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with the triple crown. So, anyways, this is going to be a hell. I saw I saw the first one in Toronto at Forbidden Door 2. Great match. The real main event of that show. Uh, it was actually made event of that show. Anyways, uh, like I'm looking forward to this rematch. Hopefully, Brian Danielson does not break anything early on, and, and he doesn't have to tough it out like he's like Toshiaki Kawada back in '99. But um, yeah, but our, our main event uh, in name is uh, Sonata, the current IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, defending his title against former tag partner and the, the G1 Climax winner this year, Tetsuya Naito. Um, I, I, I really don't care. I'm sure it'll be a good match. Um, I, I I don't care if Naito wins the belt or not. I which I assume he is. I, I, I think this might be uh his 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 time again to, to win this this title again and uh be the world heavyweight champion, the IWGP, you know, top guy in, in New Japan for for about four months. So they put it on evil or something like that. Cause that's what they do with Naito. They don't give him long rings, they 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 just job him out. To the flavor of the month heel. Anyways, uh, overall thoughts on this card, Karen. We'll start with you. Uh, I'm. It's already becoming a long card, and I, so I am concerned about how long the card will actually be. I have a feeling they're going to tack a, a Rambo on there. Um, I am very, 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 very salty that there is no IWGP Women's Championship match on this card, and that it's actually on the Stardom card earlier on the same day at the Tokyo Dome City Hall across the street. <laughs> I I and 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 the and also the New Japan Strong Women's Championship is also not on this card because it's going to be at Battle in the Valley a week and a half later. So I yeah. I don't know I don't know why they have two women's championships right now if neither of them are going to be featured on Wrestle Kingdom. To all those people who like were touting that Oh yeah, we see we called it New Japan's got a women's division. No, they don't. I knew this was gonna fucking happen with this title. I knew that it was just for show. I knew it was just, oh, we we can get Kyrie. We're gonna we'll create this belt. That's what they did. They created the belt for her. Okay, because they thought we're gonna get a former WWE star to come in because they're all marks for people who used to be in WWE, you know. But you know, went to Kyrie, went to Mercedes, then you know, Mayu and like and Mayu's the most most stable of the champions for that belt, and they don't even treat her with any respect. They don't, she didn't even find out, right? Until like they announced, "Oh yeah, you're gonna be defending it." Like you know, not she, even she, at the. She found out at the strategy meeting on a PowerPoint slide that she was not on Wrestle Kingdom. That's and my my heart bled for her while she was trying to process that in real time on a YouTube live stream. So all you people think that you take a lip, victory lap about New Japan's women's division, ah. Uh -uh. You, you, I, I'm saying on your left because I knew this was gonna fucking happen. Anyways, Dylan, your overall thoughts on this card? Do you have any thoughts about the 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 the, the, uh, the exclusion of the women's championship from this show? No, I'm just like you, WH. Uh, when that belt got announced, the very first day, uh, the July of that year, it got announced. I did a show on our Patreon where I predicted this was going to happen only because these crusty old bastards that run this company, you knew they weren't going to be happy about women stealing their spotlight. They're stuck in the decades past. They need to let the nostalgia era go. Stardom was at its peak for a long time when this was happened. They got super hot. They did amazing matches. Uh, you know, Julia and Shuri was a feud that was so great. Uh, you know, they got to upgrade the whole thing when Bushiro and Pershing start them. But you knew that the New Japan guys weren't going to be happy about this. And we knew it this, like last year anyway. Even Kyrie, yeah, they got her and that was cool and all. But it was, what did it lead to, really? A five-minute match at you know, Wrestle Kingdom? And then they immediately took it away in America on top of it. So they're lost. They don't know what they're doing. I knew they were going to screw everything up because they're stupid when it comes to women and, and all of that stuff in New Japan. A lot of these guys are older there's again, they're not with the times, man. It sucks. And you know, it deserves 
deserves better. The title deserves better. And if Mayu had a title match on this show, or Julia, who's, who's wonderful, obviously, but if Mayu had a title match on this show, that would probably be one of the best matches on this whole show because if you look at this show, this is my problem. And I know what you said. I, I, I'm not a fan of Sonata either, WH. You know that. But the fact is, this match is one of the only matches on the card that isn't a, a rematch of something we've seen already. Like, and that's a shame because it feels like we have because they've been so connected for so long. But everything else, Shingo Tonga, we've seen that. Hiromu Desperado, we've seen that a million times. War Dogs and Catch 2 2, that'll be a good match, but it's nothing special. It's the junior tag titles. Bishamon versus whoever, if it's TMDK, like we think, we say that. Zach and Hiroshi Tanahashi, we've seen that already. Uh, the whatever they're doing with the titles, I don't know. And Okada and Brian, we've seen that as well. So there's not a lot of originality in this card, unfortunately, and it doesn't do a lot for me on paper. There's good matches. Like, you know, Desperado and Hiromu could be a great match, but I have no interest in that title or anything they're doing with that. We've seen them wrestle so many times. Uh, I think Zach and Hiroshi will be a great match, but unfortunately Tanahashi is a guy who's been around. Uh, you know, what will this do? I don't know, but I hope it gives them a chance to do a different style of match with the time limit. That's one thing. And the main event is a complete business decision. Uh, Naito, for better or worse, is the most popular guy in this company, and he will get the fans there. And I think that's what really Sonata's whole title reign was about, was giving us a bridge to get to Naito winning the title in the Dome and letting all the Naito fans be happy. And hopefully they do give him a title reign, but unfortunately, WHI agree with what you said more accurately, is that they'll probably just job him out to a heel like that. They yeah, need to get over night. Naito's night. Naito's a, I, I, you know, I hate to say it because he is the most popular guy. He's been the most popular guy in that company for years. I, 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 I think legit like his fans, not just the Western fans that are, that are like Naito stands, but like the, 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 the fans in Japan that I've, that I've been around like fucking house shows, fucking dominion, cheap one climaxes, Russell kingdoms, like in Japan, like, they 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 want to like have a reign that they can point to and say, "Holy shit! Look at this collection of matches that he had during defending this belt." They want us to point to him and, and say, "Like he, you can compare that to like one of like Tanahashi's reigns to to one of Okada's reigns to one of like fucking Shinya Hashimoto's reigns or Keiji Muto's reigns." But you can't because they treat Naito as a champion as a transition champion. That that's what he is, and it's sad that that I have to say that, but it's true, and but that's how and that's so like if once he loses that belt to some heel in like two three months, he's get, is he going to be champion by Dominion time? I'd be surprised if that happens. But um, I'm just going to go through my quick predictions as of right now. Uh, Takagi wins, retains. Uh, El Desperado wins. Um, War Dogs retain. Uh, Whoever World Tag League winners are will win the tag team titles, probably TMDK. Uh, Zach retains. Um, David Finley wins this new belt um, because he's the only guy staying and he's the project. Um, I'm going to say Okada gets his win back. And, uh, yeah, Naito wins the title. Uh, Dylan, what are your predictions very quickly? Yeah, uh, I'll I'll say this, that... I think that it's nice of them to really get all the titles on the show, at least. Uh, they, they put a focus on that. And when you look at it, Shingo, Takagi, and Tamatanga, I'll go with Shingo. I'll say Hiromu. I definitely think Hiromu is going to keep the title. They, he needs to go for that record, which is coming up in about a month's time. Uh, I think that uh, War Dogs will get the junior titles. Uh, the World Tag League winners, whoever they are, are, are going to beat Bishamon. I'll throw a little bit of a swerve and say Tanahashi gets the, the TV title. Uh, give him something to do for a little while. Zach's had it for a whole year. Let's move on. Give Tanahashi one last big moment. Uh, Osprey, I think it's interesting because that match, it's so weird. There's so many political factors into it with the AEW situation. Ideally, you would have wanted an Osprey Omega 3 match, uh, you know, and they're not getting that, obviously. Instead, we have this. Finley, obviously... He seems like a guy who could be there for a loss post. Osprey could win this and then lose a month later because I don't know if they have him scheduled to come in until after February, after New Beginning, I believe they said. So I could see Osprey winning it. 
But I'm like you. I think Finley, they, they need to have put more into their own guy, more than AEW guy. So I'll go with Finley. Uh, Okada will win the singles match, get his win back on Danielson. And Naito will definitely win the main event. I, I, I would be stunned if Sonata were to win that. All right, Karen, your, your predictions. All right. So Takagi's keeping the never. I need Tama to do something else. Uh, I have Zach retaining and Shibata challenging him. Uh, Hiromu keeping the belt because, again, they want to do that historic reign with him. But honestly, both of these guys should be open weight and or heavyweights. I am I love them, but I need them to do something else. Uh, yes. I I want to say that War Dogs Juniors are going to keep it, but also I think TJP and Akira, they're also a very big passion project, so it's possibly it could go either way for me on that one. Finley's getting the brand new belt. Because I feel like the reason why they keep recruiting people for Bullet Club and or House of Torture is that the only way that Osprey and Mox are going to go down with a loss in this match is if if there is a lot of... there. Unfortunately, I feel like this match is going to be ruined by a lot of Bullet Club bullshit. For lack of a better term, I feel like that's what's going to overwhelm it. Uh, Okada over Danielson and Naito getting Sonata, getting the, the LIJ roll call only because, you know, the reason why he's not on these tours for the last two months is he had to have his eye surgery for the third time on his right eye, I believe. And the surgery he's had, he can only have it up to three times. So this is his last chance. His knees were already shot, as it were. This is probably the beginning of Naito's last ride. And I hope beyond hope that uh, Katsuhiko Nakajima comes out and challenges him afterwards, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Mm, I... I... I don't. I. I mean, I think Nakajima's coming to New Japan in 2024. I just don't know if he's going to be soon. Committed. Yeah, I'll soon because I think he's pretty committed for the foreseeable future to, to all Japan right now. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with his match against uh, Kento, and and that's uh, something I, I'm also looking forward to. We'll and we'll probably talk about that. We'll probably uh, do some some like quick reviews of all Japan and. And, and Noah, when when Karen and I come back on January sixth to talk about uh, you know um, Russell Kingdom and uh, and New Year's Dash, we'll talk about those at the end of the end of the show. But uh, guys, like I I think uh, yeah, like uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be watching this show because I do have to talk about it on a, on a podcast. But uh, I, you know what? Overall, I'm looking forward to it. I hope they do not add anything else to this fucking show because I do not want it to be longer. Well, All right, let's let's get to 2023. Sorry, go ahead, Karen. I was gonna say uh Okada, Tanahashi, and Ishii still are the never six man. So I'm guessing there's gonna be a never six man gauntlet for New Year's Dash. Whoever's gonna challenge those, get the belts off of them. Sure. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? I know, I about? know. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to think of how many hours I'm gonna have to make waffles for. That's all. All right, so waffles. By the way, uh, or New Japan I, cakes. I can make New Japan cakes. I, I I know you're not you 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 use like to slander the Waffle House. Dylan, what are your thoughts about the Waffle House? <laughs> oh, we cannot stand for this slander of Waffle House. I am from Memphis, Tennessee. A a person who grew up in the South. There's Waffle House. There's literally one two minutes away from where I live. Uh, so I cannot understand this disrespect to Waffle House. Uh, I'm not against New J New Japan cakes, but we cannot slander the Waffle House. I do not agree with this at all. How, how can you agree, say that? We girl? will we will agree to disagree about Waffle House, bro. Let me tell you it's something. It's fine. It's In fine. In April, I'm going to fucking Pittsburgh to see Rich Fan, my cohort from fucking MCU. Later, I'm going to stay with him for a couple of days in Pittsburgh, and then we're going to drive to Philadelphia and. On the way there, I, I got to assume in Pennsylvania, there's some Waffle Houses. And, and I'm going to say, Rich Fan, you need to take me to a goddamn Waffle House because I need to try this shit. Fuck that yeah. The Usos, that the Usos and Sami Zayn love. And if Sami Zayn and the fucking Usos love Waffle House, then I know that's good enough for me. That's a good enough endorsement for any, pick, any pick person some, who loves breakfast. Pick up some Imodium AD while you're on the road, bro. You're going to need it. Why am I gonna get shot at the Waffle House? Like I'm gonna go no, in the morning. For your, I'm not going at three your, three o'clock. No, a body meat is for your stomach. It helps like soothe your stomach. Karen, I'm fucking Korean. Okay, you know how much <laughs> fucking kimchi I eat for yeah, my life. <laughs> so, that's the good bacteria <laughs> shit. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, as, as I make uh, Karen a uh, cough up a lung there, uh, let's get to 2023, the year in view. Let, let's kind of go with the big shows in, in month by month almost here. I, I, I think I started my notes month to month, and then I just 
went by show. Big show is a big show. And then we'll try to embellish, as I said before. So in, in January, we had Noah. Uh, the, the, big, the big happening in Noah was the jumping from All Japan for Wrestling because he was tired of uh, Suwama or, or somebody or Shuji Ishikawa's bullshit booking of him. Jake Lee decided to leave All Japan for Wrestling. And he showed up at Noah the New Year show on uh, January 1st. And uh, yeah, he, he, uh, he, uh, he, he, what happened? He, he challenged, he challenged uh, Kaito, right? Right off the bat, as I recall. And uh, yeah, and he made a huge impact. And no, I think he was probably the most stable guy. Him and Dr. Wagner Jr. Jr. were the most stable champions of 2023. Uh, so I, I think, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't too like, sure about how jake lee was gonna do i didn't think he was gonna win the title right away i didn't think he was gonna hold it that long but hey he surprised me and i think he established himself as a top level guy in noah this past year and, and you know what and good for them and also on that show the the then tag team champions takashi sugiera and satoshi kojima um you know the man who loves bread teaming with the man who loves uh, japanese pornography they retained their tag team titles over the uh, the uh, one night only reunion of Maru Ken, Namichi Marufuji, and Kenta. Uh, Kaido Kiyomiya successfully defended his GHC Heavyweight title against Keno in the semi main event of that show, but it doesn't matter because he he just turned into a jobber for the rest of the year. And in the actual main event, the WWE's Shinsuke Nakamura beat. Noah's legend, the guy who is synonymous with pro wrestling Noah, the great Muda in his retirement match. And then even 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 better, great Muda, Keiji Muda decided to make a complete jackass of himself in the press conference by <laughs> making some homophobic remarks. What 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 a what a way to start the fucking year for pro wrestling Noah. Uh Overall thoughts about Jake and, and, and the show. Uh, Karen, you're so, we'll start with you. Uh, I remember, I believe I did cover the show for Post. Uh, I enjoyed the show up until the point that Muda made that backstage comment. I was like, it's a good, it's a good show. It was, it was a good time. There were a lot, a lot of stuff happened, a lot of moving parts. You know, all my, all my faves were in one place. Jake Lee showed up. Kenta and Kojima showed up. Kiyomiya, you know. He, he was champion. Kenna was in the main event, or sorry, the semi main event. I I liked seeing Shinsuke on it, like somewhere else other than WWE, where he felt like something really, really important. And then, you know, as I was getting ready to turn off my TV and roll into bed and take a nap on New Year's Day, my morning got ruined by backstage comments. Yeah, there you go. Dylan, your thoughts about this? Uh, the the no the New Year from from this past year. The only good thing I could say about that is that thankfully I didn't have a lot of respect for him anyway. So I did. It's not like I lost anything by, by him being stupid. Uh, uh, there, that's the one good thing about it. Um, the Kaito and Keno match was awesome. Uh, the Makasa versus Junta Miyawaki, who also is now a jobber and has been for the entire year, uh, that was a great no. match for the junior title. I thought that was almost as good as the the heavyweight match. Uh, you know, super fun to see Kenta. Uh, in Noah, this is like the last time he tried in a match, I, I think, uh, at this point we're talking about. And Jake coming in, uh, he didn't challenge Kaito right away. He actually challenged Inamura first, uh, and uh, then they pivoted to Kaito after what happened. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about what happened at the Mudo the Dome show. Sure. Uh, from, uh, from New Japan, of course, get every year, January 4th, Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, one of the big happenings was Kyrie. Uh, who's now back in WWE, by the way. And, and, and you know what? She is in the greatest thing in WWE right now, and that is damage control. Made it even better. Uh, she defended her IWGP women's title against Tom Nakano in a very short match because the real attraction of that match, having that match on Wrestle Kingdom, was to, was to have former WWE superstar, which, you know, Japanese promotions love their former WWE superstars. Mercedes Monet, formerly known as Sasha Banks, Coming out to challenge Kyrie by hitting a really terrible looking version of her finisher. But that's okay. You know, people were talking about that and her, I believe her Eddie Guerrero inspired uh, uh, hair dye job for her hair. And uh, 
yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, what did you think about the? I don't care. You, 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 you were not a fan of the the length of this match, and you, and you probably, as I recall, you seem to pretty much predict that. Oh, it's probably a backdrop for Mercedes coming out. It, it uh, yeah, I. I was I was excited when the belt became a thing. I was there to see Kyrie win it. I was excited when their match got announced for Russell Kingdom because it made it feel like a big deal. And then it was less than six minutes from bell to bell. The entrances were almost as long as the match itself. And then Mercedes's entrance and at post match was longer than the match itself. So it felt like everything that Kyrie did, everything that stardom did up until this point felt like not with the IWGP wins championship. It felt like nothing more than a placeholder to unveil Mercedes Monet to the world. And I, the, the, like, I don't, the finisher, that whole situation that upset me because it, it just, if you're wanting to come in and make a statement, I don't necessarily know that, you know, doing what every other heel does is by coming in and, dropping the champion after they just won is it's fine whatever i'm not gonna have the sasha mercedes stands come after me i'm too old and too tired um but it just it kind of started the chain reaction of the iwgp women's championship meaning wanting to mean something but then not feeling like it meant as much as it could have should have or was built up to be the way you make a title especially a new one is to have oh a champion God. have a very long reign correct awesome matches it, there was know. no stability for this belt no, no. dylan what, what what did you think about this match and then uh, mercedes showing up afterwards first of all we have to give it up i i, I gotta throw pa- prayers up for the tom road we've been wa- walk, walking lately she's been injured i want her to get better and this whole situation sucks so much. I hated it at the time. I still hate it now. I feel a little unhappy even talking about it. My mood has considerably lowered. I was actually in a pretty good mood talking to you both. Uh, very happy to be on Post Pro Res. And now thinking about this, I hate my life once again. That's the fourth hate my life count we've got right now on this show. And it's all thanks to their terrible booking and Mercedes coming in with her awful, awful uh, Monet maker finisher and also awful theme music that had played at the, at the show as well so it was a double whammy but hey i will say this Kyrie and, and nakano they actually worked really hard for that uh short brief time they got uh, they actually did the best they could with it so i was proud of them for trying at least it's just they were they were sabotaged by forces all above our heads well dylan i'm here to cheer you up because you know what else happened on this show Zack Sabre Jr. joined forces with Shane. Was that the show? Was it New Year's Dash? I can't remember. Joined forces with Shane Haste and Mikey Nichols. Buddies back in their Noah days. And they formed a new version of TMDK in New Japan that, that includes Robbie Eagles. Robbie Eagles is not United Empire. Even though I keep <laughs> saying he's in United Empire, he's actually in TMDK. I keep you fucking that up. You know, but yeah, I, you know what, I think it, this, and, and they also got young Kosei Fujita in here. It's a, it's a, it's a nice tight little faction. I'm sure this made you really happy, Dylan. Oh, I mean, this is back to, to my era of Noah. I loved the galaxy brain. Karen came out earlier talking about when she saw him win the GHC titles in 2015. I was there. Well, I wasn't at the arena, obviously. Unfortunately, you guys have the Japanese cred more than me. But still, I really loved that. Uh, loved their team in Noah. And I love Zach and Noah as well. Uh, I think it's great that they got together. And it was really freaking cool. And look what they've done with it. I mean, give, you know, to speak the opposite of the IWGP wins title, the TV title. Zach has held this title for a year, had a ton of really cool matches, and made it mean something. And I think they've done a great job with the group and him. And, uh, you know, Team DK really got a boost, especially my main man, Mad Mikey Nichols, in the G1 as well. So lots of cool stuff from Team DK this year. The only thing with that television title is it's god-awful ugly. It is, looks like shit. Just give him a new belt, okay? With, with buckles. It's a TV dinner title. It's the TV dinner title. Give him a proper like this thing's got fucking Velcro on it. No belt. Like I this one thing, like I cannot believe what WB they have Velcro on their fucking championship belts. That's that's embarrassing. That's that's like amateur hour. 
That's like fucking Dollarama bullshit. Dollarama, by the way, is the dollar store chain here. In yeah. Toronto. So, um, yes. In in also, let's talk about in Muto's last New Japan match, uh, him and uh, Tanahashi and uh, Shota Umino defeated uh, the team of uh, Naito Sonata, as he was still in LIJ at the time, and and Bushi Bushi and Sonata being Muto trainees. Uh, this happened after I, I believe Shota pinned Bushi. Is that correct, guys? I believed so. After, of course, Muto hit Bushi with the Shining Wizard. Because <laughs> it couldn't be Shota hitting his finisher on Bushi. He had to be after Muto hit the fish. I mean, it's his last, his last, retire, his last match in New Japan. But there you go. Hiromu Takahashi won the IWGP heavyweight, junior heavyweight title from uh, uh, Ishimori in a four, oh, in a four way. And is still holding that belt now. Like he's having a hell of a reign. Uh, Kenny Omega. Took on Will Ospreay for the U.S. title, won the belt. I, I was very surprised, and I thought this match. I saw Omega Osprey two live at Forbidden Door two. I I hated that match. I loved the Wrestle Kingdom match. I thought this fucking match was awesome, and 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 the most one of the most awesome moments. And I'm gonna quote someone from from Twitter here. One of the most awesome moments was at 5:37 a.m. I believe that's my local time. My good friend, Richard Benson, a.k.a. Benno, Benno. from Grapple, tweeted this out. He said, because Will Ospreay went back to his roots. He brought back his awesome elevated theme. But and, but Benno wrote this on Twitter. He said, elevated is playing. Shut the fuck up, Chris Charlton. Hashtag WK17. And and when I saw that, I was like, despite despite Benno's love of fucking Nick Gage and deathmatch wrestling and his love of the Fast and the Furious fucking franchise, I said, Benno's my man because he said, shut the fuck up, Chris Charlton, because no one wants to hear your fucking bullshit over Will Ospreay's awesome theme music. Hey, that's all I got to say about that. But great match. And uh, yeah, what, what did you think about Osprey Omega, Karen? I preferred this Osprey Omega to the Forbidden Door Osprey Omega. And I was, again, we mentioned it earlier. I was hoping that that would be the, the, the blow off would have been at Wrestle Kingdom this year, but I'm guessing they're saving that for AEW 2024. I probably Wembley. I think it's going to be the main event of Wembley. Uh, uh, yeah. Dylan, Omega Osprey won. No, I totally agree with both of you. Uh, this was the superior match, in my opinion, between this and, and Forbidden Door. I agree with what Karen said. Uh, you know, they're wanting to say this about, um, I would say this from AEW in, in next year. But I the, the main thing I remember about this wasn't Osprey's theme music. It wasn't Osprey's theme music. It was Kenny Omega with the Final Fantasy VII Sephiroth return here. Uh, which popped me big and made it special. The whole thing was special, and uh, I thought they did an excellent job. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't play Final Fantasy, so I didn't really get the reference. But uh, hey, you know, I know a lot of Shame people like you. that. Well, I mean, it is what it is. I don't know. Like, but we, uh, yeah, there you go. Karen, Karen I think, uh, had to uh, take care of her uh, her cough, so she'll be back in couple of minutes but we'll we'll continue and uh, in the main event of this show Kazuchika Okada beat Jay White in another lackluster Jay White match to win the IWGP World Heavyweight title I I fucking hated this match because I thought it was boring <laughs> shit well isn't that all of his matches because I'm yes. always on the same page uh, no, I will much, say so. this Dylan I will say this I think Jay White in AEW is is infinitely better because Jay White is a great American television wrestling wrestler. I think that you didn't see his match with Jay Lethal this week. Uh, well, I that. did not. No, I did not yes. see his match with Jay Lethal. But I think Jay White as a gimmick, the Switchblade as a gimmick, the, the Jay White promo works much better in an American wrestling context versus a Japanese wrestling context. So, and he can do his like fucking ballet sequence, fucking counter, 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 counter. All he wants here. It, 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 I don't have to see that shit. Well, you still see that shit in New Japan, unfortunately. But um, but yeah. there you go. And then, uh, yeah, Karen. He, he, he uh, would like me, me, 
me and me and me and Dylan were just agreeing about how shit most Jay White matches are. Uh, this one with Okada not being any exception. I already have the Mercedes stance coming off me. I don't need the Jay White stance coming off me as well. It's it was. I'm glad that they, <laughs> they finally sent Jay on his merry way so he can go be happy and do whatever he is doing now. It. I I didn't go in with a high expectation that Jay was going to keep the belt. And yeah, I, I I've seen Okada and Jay have better matches. I wasn't expecting a, a knock my socks off blowout. At the uh, LIJ por- portion of the press conference, who came out to challenge them? But Congo, led by Keno, yelling at at Naito and 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 all the other members of LIJ, and 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 unfortunately for Congo. LIJ decided we're going to accept your challenge and then we're going to beat all of you <laughs> later on in the coming months. Uh, New Year's Dash the next day. Um, I don't know what happened there. Shingo won the uh, KOPW bullshit belt and, and uh, Okada and Ken Chen, you know, they surprisingly teamed up to defeat the team of Jeff Cobb and Inherare. Who took the pin in that match? I can't remember exactly, but I'm going to guess it was Hanare. I think so. You know, w- you know, WH, I just want to say one thing real quick because, uh, Karen, you left right when I was mentioning this. What were your thoughts Sorry. on Kenny's Final fa- Final Fantasy entrance uh, at Wrestle Kingdom? See, the thing is that Final Fantasy Seven is my game. It's always been my game. It is my yes. favorite of all the... It is... I am a shameless Sephiroth and Vincent Valentine fangirl. I am Tifa over Aerith. I think Cloud is garbage. It, yes. I, yes, I, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and and Sid Highwind is dramatically and drastically underappreciated and undervalued. Um, I I was happy to see it. Um, but again, I wish I could have seen the whole the whole costume in person because it, it was very nice costuming. The end. Mm-hmm. There you go. I I mean, this is basically Karen. You're just basically asking for an invite to get to be a guest on the Eastern Larry at some point, I think. <laughs> I mean, I haven't, I have yet to be on the Eastern Larry podcast. So who knows? Who knows what the next, the new year shall bring? Well, I think Dylan's probably thinking I'm going to have to invite Karen out because WH and Karen just forced me to, to make the invite. Is that true? <laughs> no, the door, the door is always open. I, and I started this very call of praising you and your work and your love of Joshi wrestling that you do for a post and your articles are so good. Uh, Thank you. Know, you. Very informative. And you, uh, I would love to have you on the Eastern Larian. So WH trying to stir the pot right now, trying to put words in my mouth. I didn't say that. All right. Now, I'm telling the truth right now. I know. I'm just joking. I do that. I joke a lot. Wrestle Kingdom 17. <laughs> yes, they're still calling. And we love you for it. They're still calling this like three weeks later, uh, Wrestle Kingdom 17 show in Yokohama Arena. <laughs> LIJ beat Congo 3-2 to two with Naito beating Keno in the main event, but the real news was the violent interaction between Kaido Kiyomiya versus Okada that should have been a year-long program leading to Okada versus Kiyomiya singles match at, at, at this fucking Wrestle Kingdom coming up, but no, New Japan and Noah had to both fuck it up, and now we're stuck with Naito versus fucking Sonata, and Kaido Kiyomiya has gone from top of Noah to the bottom of like can't even win a fucking tag league with the fucking young lion from fucking new japan as his partner oh and by the way also keiji muto came up to naito to say hey you're an actual star you're someone i can actually lose to none of these guys in noah are worth me losing to i want to i want you to be my retirement match at the tokyo dome which is going to be produced by noah by the way uh on february 21st i i I, I I just have to laugh at people who like think that Keiji Muto was good for Pro Wrestling Noah. No, you just use Pro Wrestling Noah because they're a bunch of money marks. Like Sanshiro Takagi is obviously a Keiji Muto mark. Just like a confirmed Keiji Muto wannabe Keiji Muto mark from their days in all Japan together. No Sarang guy, just that you can do whatever you want, my hero, my 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 god. I, I, I will let you do whatever you want in this company. And guess what Keiji Muto did? And I hate saying this because I fucking love Keiji Muto. He, he just did whatever he wanted. And, and I could not wait for 
for February 21st, pressing lo last love to happen because that meant he was probably going to go away. Yeah, it didn't actually happen, by the way. He didn't actually go away, but that, well, that, that's, that's, I'll probably talk more about that later. Uh, in February, we had a big show from Stardom, the Supreme Fight from uh, February 4th. Julia had her first uh, V1 victory of the Red Belt against uh, Suzu Suzuki. Uh, Saya Kamatani broke the record for the white belt defenses by defeating a uh, former record holder, Momo Watanabe. Uh, both matches were awesome. Um, I, I really think this is, for me, like the last time I was super interested in stardom in 2023 because I, I just felt there were too many shows to try to keep following. There, there were too many people coming into the company. It was like, I just, I feel like, you know, like as a fan, I, I want you to focus on several people that you're going to push to like the upper tier and then like work on mid card projects and then get them ready to then go to the next level. And I just felt like they were just like introducing people, signing people, bringing people in. Let's have more shows. Let's have three month long tournaments and let's have everyone get injured on 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 this on this roster and and I, I i gotta say maybe february was the peak for me for for stardom fandom and i i just it was very hard for me to maintain my interest in 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 stardom overall this year I, i'm hoping 2024 is a is a different story but we'll we'll see um anyways this you you covered this karen what, what were your thoughts about this show and and what do you think about the, like kind of like the impact this show had on the rest of stardom's year Personally, I liked Julia and Suzu's match at the Five Star Grand Prix last year more than I liked this match. Their the the mat their match at the Five Star in 2022 still had all the angst and anger that Suzu was feeling about coming over uh, from Ice Ribbon and all her residual anger and resentment towards Julia for abandoning her and abandoning I uh, Ice Ribbon just to become a big star in stardom. Um, but this match, it, it kind of kind of closed the book on their rivalry for the time being. Um, Kamatani had a monster run with the white belt. I am glad that she was able to beat Momo's record by beating Momo. I thought that very poetic. Uh, but yeah, Stardom's schedule was way too hard for way too long. And it caught up with them in the second half of this year. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of I think a lot of plans had to either change or a lot of now they're just trying to scramble to put together uh dream queendom at the end of the month because they still have, they had to vacate two belts. They had to vacate the tag championship because not supposed poison not ready to come back. They had to vacate the world of stardom championship, their top championship uh, because Tam wasn't ready to come back. Uh, they, in the strategy meeting, they said that they're going to consider a lighter schedule for stardom a possibly a shorter five star Grand Prix. Two, the the problem with the way that Stardom ran, ran ran any of the tournaments, the Cinderella tournament was the same, the Triangle Derby was the same. They try to put every single person on every single card, and with their tournaments is that they spread it out along a longer period. So you know you're not having match after match after match after match. The problem is that they sell so many tickets and they have so many shows that they want to shove everybody onto every card. So the only way they can do that is if they don't have all of the Grand Prix matches or any tournament matches all on the same day, except for the opening day and the closing day. And I feel like that's, I mean, Kamatani blew out her elbow the first day of the five-star Grand Prix. And she only just came back with like less than a month or less than a month before start the big end of the year show. Utami was out for a couple of months. Starlight Kid was out for like a, a lot of their big names all the hard work that they've done to keep stardom relevant, keep stardom like on as one of the large topics of conversation, in the Japanese wrestling scene and internationally, it came at a great cost. And that was at a significant part of their very popular upper card roster. The other problem is like, like you said, they keep bringing people in. That is good because, you know, it, in the event that people were leaving, but nobody was leaving, they were either retiring or getting hurt. And that isn't a reason to keep bringing in new people all the time. And I think that was the frustrating thing is that people who were starting to finally get momentum were all of a sudden getting shoved further back down the card as they were bringing in new people on top of that. So it, it was one of those things like when when Himika decided to retire, like basically the approach was, I've realized that this is all I can do. This is all as far as I'm going to go. And that's not the attitude your your roster should have to come to terms with is that 
this is all this is as far as I'm going to go. Those the, the people who are there day in, day out, week in, week out, year in, year out, those are the people you should be focusing on. Not bringing in someone who's a you know a flashbang surprise and then make a big deal out of them and then ignore the people that have been there that have kept the lights on that have been kept working really hard. So yeah. I love stardom, but I'm having I I 2023 was a very difficult year for me as a fan for it. No, what 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 about your thoughts about 2023 for stardom um from 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 this supreme fight show first of all again i really agree with what karen said about the main event of the show the julia and suzu match from the five star the year prior was a lot better and a lot more emotional you just were not able and there's no way they really could able you know would, would have been able to match that level of emotion they showed in that match uh, I absolutely loved the Mirai versus Chihiro Hashimoto match. That's still one of my absolute favorite matches of the year at any company. Uh, I thought it was so good. Uh, Chihiro just came in with a huge splash. Mirai is one of my favorite um, and uh, favorite workers in stardom, and I thought they just did a great job. The overall year, exactly what you, you guys both said a little bit, because at this time, when the February show happened, I was such a huge fan of stardom. They were my favorite company for the last year and a half. I thought it was absolutely brilliant what they did with Shuri's title reign, literally from the win, dedicating it to her mom, uh, all the way to the year-long storyline with her and Julia finally culminating with an amazing match. I just thought it was so special. Mirai was doing amazing matches, one of my favorite workers emerging out of nowhere. You had new factions coming in with God's Eye. Uh, you had, you know, Ananae come, came back in with 7-Up. Uh, you had some good stuff there. Uh, everything seemed like it was clicking so well. And, you know, then, like Karen said, all of these injuries and all of the disarray backstage, uh, a couple of months ago, there was a lot of controversy surrounding a big timing miscue at one of their shows, which led to an investigation. There's a new president now. Julia was posting online defending Rossi, saying he wasn't getting listened to. And I just, it was such a, such a shame. And even just, uh, just yesterday, Yesterday, I think it was, they had a really low number uh, in attendance wise in one of their shows and people were talking about it. So they're trying, like like Karen said, they're trying to cobble together this Queendom show. And hopefully, God bless Suzu and Micah because they're great wrestlers. This roster is still top to bottom percentage wise, probably the best of any company in Japan in terms of talented wrestlers. There's just so little weak, there's so little weak links, even among the younger wrestlers. Uh, that are just so great. There's people who aren't even in the top 20 who weren't even in the five-star Grand Prix with the long tournament everyone talks about. May Seira, uh, Sa Saya Ida, neither of those were in. Tekla, like you've got four or five, six, seven guy girls deep that weren't even in the top 20 in their own tournament, and they're still great. So the roster's there. The management's been horrible, uh, to be honest with you, and there's been a lot of disarray, unfortunately. Tekla should have been in the five-star. That's my big my biggest takeaway. Well, let's move on to some good news because at the new beginning in Osaka on February 11th, Okada defended his title in a great match against Shingo Takagi. But but more importantly, my man Hikaleo sent Jay White packing out, out of Japan back to America in a loser leaves Japan match, ending my pain of having to watch this guy's matches in the Japanese setting. But even better. About a week later, Battle in the Valley. Cameron, were you at this show live? No, I was not. Okay. I was on my couch. You were not at this particular show live. I get the confused because you do see a lot of shows live. The good times continue for me as my good <laughs> close, my good close personal friend, Eddie Kingston, big fan of my shows here at Post Wrestling, Banish Jay from New Japan, even New Japan America, New Japan Strong in a loser leaves NJPW match. And then David Finley. Came out and put the cherry on top, on top of that fucking cake by laying Jay out with the shillelagh and having Vince be his new manager. That's right. Mercedes Monet defeated Kyrie to win the IWGP Women's Title, wearing a tribute costume to Hannah Kimura. Great little touch there. And then Okada defeated Tanahashi to retain his IWGP heavyweight heavyweight belt. And then Mercedes came out. To hang out with Okada, Okada afterwards, so, thus signaling the new era of, of New Japan that we're going to get headlined by by Okada and Mercedes. That actually did not happen this year, but hey, one could only hope back in February, right? What, what did you think about 
the events of Jay leaving Japan and New Japan overall to go to AEW. Dylan, what are your thoughts about uh, these two shows? Yeah, well, I definitely wasn't a, a big fan of Jay and New Japan. I think there's a way to make the best use of his talents. How they used him was absolutely not the best use of his talents, but he was so, you know, like so heavily relied on. He got so many chances that I wish other people had gotten, and I was very happy to see him go, to be honest with you. Uh, even at AEW, I honestly haven't been a big fan of his work at all. Uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about him. Uh, I just I don't see anything in him really. Uh, to be honest with you, his promos. I think he's really overrated. His matches. I definitely think he's overrated. And uh, I am wanting all the smoke with the Jay White stands right now. I will do what Karen would refuse to earlier, and I will take, take them on have because it. I have to tell the truth right now. It's 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 only because I love you all. If I if I love you, I got to tell you the truth. So I ain't backing down. Hikaleo did us all a service. WH knows it. We all know it here, and I will speak up on that behalf. So Jay White, uh, you know, again, I loved him when he was a young lion. Base wise, he's got talent. I'm not hating on him at all as a person. He seems like a really cool guy, but I just did not enjoy his run at all. Let me tell you something about Jay White uh, right in now in America. He should, assign, he should have signed with WWE. I guarantee they would be using him way better than being like V V one or V two for fucking Stone Cold MJF. In that bullshit, your show long storyline with fucking MJF's bullshit leg injury. Anyways, he should have gone over there, just like my boy Phil, just like my new favorite Cody Rhodes. That's right, I'm now a Cody guy because he's in WWE again. Anyways, just kidding, everyone. Uh, Satoshi Kojima <laughs> oh. left Noah oh, okay. at the end of February. I, I just like going on tangents, and so we're just gonna, you know, go another tangent. Satoshi Kojima, he left. Noah had a very good run in Noah at the end of February to basically become a freelancer working primarily New Japan and All Japan. Both, you know, both. He's not really contracted to either. He's just, you know, hey, who's who wants to use me for extended period of time? So both, like, both of his former haunts, like, will use him, and that's good. I like Kojima. I think Kojima can add a lot to any roster that he's on, and I think they'd probably use him a lot more and a lot better. In all Japan than they do in New Japan. Karen, I know you're a big fan of of the bread maker here. I I you know I am a shameless shameless Satoshi Kojima fan. And uh, while we were talking, a friend of mine just texted me. I guess he uh he pinned friend of the show Tom Lawler at MLW uh, tonight, and the crowd threw slices of bread into the ring. It has rained bread in honor of Satoshi Kojima. So you know what, 2023 might actually end on a high note for me. Listen. I hope he didn't eat any of that bread because, like, God knows whatever what else happened. What was it? An MLW show? MLW. MLW Listen, one shot. I'm I'm pretty sure Kurt Bauer does not clean that ring. So who knows? All the blood and sweat and whatever god awful things have been spilled on that ring probably infected that bread. So I hope Kojima did the smart thing and said, "I'm not eating this shit." But what did you think about Kojima's year, Dylan, working in New Japan and all Japan, and even, and even still working like Noah to, for some dates? I think the one question we have to ask, because I agree, Kojima's awesome, a uh, great veteran. Even in Noah last year, I thought he was a totally worthy champion, did a great job uh, for the role they gave him. But I think what we really need to focus on heading into 2024, how do we feel about satoshi kojima as a mummy on monday magic in noah he's gotta he's still gotta pay bills man like i, I don't i don't i don't i'm not gonna watch it but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna <laughs> you know you know i'm not gonna take away someone's you know unlike benno i'm not gonna take any food off people's table you know what i'm saying if you if, you, if you're a fan of like benno on the twitter you'll know what i'm exactly what i'm talking about that reference oh okay okay well hey kojima Still, though, uh, did some good stuff in all Japan. Had a great match with Yuma Oyagi, uh, for the Triple Crown. Uh, you know, and, and like you said, any role he could have, he's really a great kind of utility player, you know, like a, a really good veteran in baseball that maybe he doesn't have the power that he once had, but you could put him anywhere on the field and he'll deliver serviceable numbers for you in the middle of the order. So, shout out to Satoshi Kojima. Okay, let, let's go to. Noah's Noah produced Keishimuto Grand 
final pro wrestling last love holdout. What a, what a awesome title for a show from February 21st. Okada defeated Kiyomiya. Just unreal. How much money these companies just pissed away with doing this match. So early in the year, and Okada just beat him. Just beat the fucking guy. This poor fella, I swear, like, I, I, I still think if he... If he can sell the only way he's going to salvage his career is if he goes, if he leaves Noah, it goes to first to goes to New Japan for wrestling. Uh, Naito beat Muda in his beat Muto in his last match, or or did he? Well, actually, he didn't because Keiji Muto decided to call in his buddy Masahiro Chono, who was doing commentary at ringside. They had an impromptu last match with Tiger Hattori uh, do, doing being the official for that, and and then. And then Chono got, got Mudo in the STF, and he beat Mudo. So think about this, everyone. Keiji Mudo could, couldn't put Kaido Kimi over, couldn't put Nakajima over, couldn't put fucking Go Shizaki or any other young guy in Noah over. But he had no problem putting over Shizuke Nakamura, Tetsuya Naito, and, Masah- and fucking Masahiro Chono. You know why? Because they're all New Japan guys. And in his heart, I don't care how long he was president of all Japan. I don't care how, how much he did in pressing Noah. He, in his heart, he's always going to be a new Japan guy. And then, and then Dylan, you were right at the press concerts after, uh, uh, after Jake Lee, uh, cl- like after Okada clown Kiyomiya, Jake Lee decided to clown him some more and challenged him for the JC title, which he then he then took off of him, and which we'll talk about as well. But uh, this show, yeah, Dylan, go, we'll go with you first. What, what did you think about the, the 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 ramifications of this show? Well, to be honest, as a show, it was a total spectacle, uh, special in a way pretty much no other show was throughout the year. Uh, Muto, we definitely could take our shots at him, and, and I think they're all valid, <laughs> any negative comments we have. But the fact of the matter is this show was the highest attended show in years and years, uh, even bigger than Wrestle Kingdom. And I'm sure that probably uh, burned some biscuits uh, you know, in New Japan, that they want to have a big show this year and beat this Dome show, which they could not do last year. And uh, the match quality wasn't really the point. My favorite match was definitely the six-man tag with uh, Kento and Nakajima coming together for the first time. And the highlight of the whole show for me was Yuma Yagi mocking Keiji Muto and getting huge heat in the dome. I love it. I would marry that man because I love him so much. And he is what pro wrestling should be about in every way. But uh, the Okada Kaito match, it was a great match in terms of execution, like just watching it. But like you said, WH... The ramifications, I said this at the time, I remember doing the show uh, uh, right after this, that this is damaging at this point. They had to take the title off of him because he was so down and out, you know, not that long after he lost the title. You know, you had fans running into the ring begging him to be not such a punk all the time. You know, it's uh, it's terrible what happened with Kaito. But, you know, I knew that they were going to do that because because it doesn't really benefit New Japan to put over Kaito, especially over Okada, the one they love the most to protect. So I kind of figured it would go this way. I know a lot of people were excited for it, but uh, yeah, I, my feelings on that match are completely negative, to be honest with you. I think it did so much damage. I wish it hadn't have happened. If, if but don't you think it, if they never touched until like now, right? Until, until Russell Kingdom, but like Kaito... Like get went into the G one, he won the fucking G one, or and then he wins the belt, or you know what I mean, or somehow like he gets the belt somehow. He he gets big wins over like fucking Tanahashi and and, and like Naito even. Like, don't you think that that would have been a massive drawing card? Like if they if they booked it correctly, if they did like if they protected Kiyomiya, like not against Okada because like the the the, the, per, the one person who beats him. It, you know, like after Kiyomiya dominates New Japan and everybody wants to see this belt taken off of him, all the New Japan fans want to see the belt taken off of him, and you have all the Noah fans wanting him to keep the belt for longer, did I mean they could have drawn like from two different fan bases to have a huge card, I think, like a huge gate at Wrestle Kingdom. Like I I don't like I don't I have no idea what what Wrestle Kingdom means. And you know the two go ahead. Go ahead, Dylan. Yeah, you know, and the thing is about that is 
that uh, yeah, yeah, the thing about that is I think that what you're saying is completely true. Like there's no lies detected with what you're saying. But the problem is, is that they don't think that way. They don't see Kaito as a star. Like when they had that match in the tag league where it was him and Oiwa versus Shota and Ren, that's the level they see Kaito at which is significantly lower than Okada. And, I, you know, in a dream world where he left Noah to go to New Japan, yes, maybe one day they could get him there, but I don't think they see him that way. I think they liked humiliating him because he was the top guy in Noah, and it was great political pop policy to humiliate their champion on the biggest stage possible. And that's what they got out of it. And so it really was a success from New Japan's point of view. What you're saying is right about them drawing late, more later on, but I don't think they care about that. They just wanted to make Kaito look bad by by proxy making Noah look like a second rate company, which they are. Like everyone looks at them like that now. So really, 2023, that mission was completely accomplished through how they treated uh, Kaito. I don't know. Karen, what, do you, what do you, did you watch this show? I I believe I covered the show for post via uh, event report, and I had such hopes and dreams for Kaito Kiyomiya in all this work with New Japan, and. It makes me sad because they, they, you know, you were talking about Tanahashi and Naito and like, you know, they're, they're not the, at their prime anymore. They're on, they're possibly on their way out. Okada could possibly be also on his way out. We don't know anymore. And it, it felt like they could have built him into something special, you know, and even if it's just, you know, they build him up and they send him back to Noah at some point, that's fine. But it's like, He's he's so he's so young, but they're 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 just it just makes me sad. Like this this whole this is all this is like the oops all sad Karen episode of Post Pro Res. Everyone, I'm really sorry, but like all my fa- all my hopes and dreams and favorites got dashed in 2023, and Kiyomiya was another one that I wanted I wanted all the best things for and got buckus for. So yeah, I'm mad. <laughs> right. We're gonna I'm just gonna run through a couple of points and we'll get your thoughts. Yuji Nagata achieved the Pro Res Grand Slam. Of, of being IWGP heavyweight champion, GHC heavyweight champion, and the triple crown champion of all Japan Pro Wrestling. He beat Kento Miyahara to win the triple crown on, on February 19th. Uh, the All-Star Junior Festival happened on March 1st. Uh, and then some, uh, okay, so some uh, t- retirements happened this year. Himeka, which we talked about, Daisuke Harada, uh, and Sak- uh, Saki Akai all retired this year. But in happy news, uh, Saray left WWE finally and returned to, returned to Japan where I, I haven't seen all her matches, but uh, from all reports, she's been having a hell of a run uh, in, in the Joshi scene back in Japan in 2023. And, and, and Karen, your thoughts on, on these, uh, these, these bullet point items here. Uh, well, I already spoke about Himeka. I loved Himeka and I was really sad when she chose to leave, but I understood why. Harada was heartbreaking because I think it was unavoidable because it was a medical issue that he there was no way that he could bring, wrestle safely anymore, so he, he had to retire. And Saki decided just to re- retire on her own terms, which I also thought was really great. Um, Yuka Sakazaki just had her last uh, TJPW show e- the day before yesterday, or no, yesterday, um, and she'll be going to the U.S. in 2024. But with Saray, I've seen some. I've seen some of the matches with her uh, since going back to Japan. She seems to be back in her element and having matches that I could understand why WWE had wanted to sign her originally. Having seen what they had done with her with an NXT in person live in Orlando, it, it felt like I was watching a completely different wrestler. So I, I hope that she is happy. She is now happy and thriving and doing what she loves. And, and uh, All Star Junior Festival. Did you enjoy that show? I I enjoyed this one. I honestly I did not watch the second one. I didn't like how D- New Japan started paywalling all of these special events. I understand why they have to do it, but I can't afford to have a pay per view three or four times a month. I I have a mortgage, so I maybe one day I'll be able to watch the American version. But I I had a good time uh, experiencing it, even though there was a lot of wrestlers I had no idea who they were. And Dylan, your thoughts on on these bullet points? Yeah, you know, um, first of all, totally agree about the paywalling with New Japan and the other companies. Uh, Cyberfight tested around with that with their companies as well. I mean, what are we, the fucking great Gatsby's here? We we are human beings. We can't afford 20,000 shows a year. So I do have to point that out. But on your bullet points, WH, 
Nagata, great champion, much like Kojima over that we mentioned earlier. Total Pro had a lot of good matches, put over a lot of the young talent. Him versus Yuma Anzai was one of my favorite matches in all Japan and this year. I thought it was a great showing for the youngster and just a great match. Uh, the Junior Festival, I think that they wanted to have a spectacle, like a special show. I don't know if it really hit the mark other than being a pretty good show. There weren't any really special matches or anything like that. The main event was w built around Wato in a singles match, which I don't think really was that great. Um, you know, it was good, but not too special. Uh, Himika retiring, that was a shame. Um, her story with her dad is so emotional if you, you read that and know about it online. Uh, you know, I thought that they did a great job of honoring her. Uh, Harada, for me, of all the retirements, was the one that hit me the most. He was my favorite. I've watched that guy for 15 years now almost. Him and Kotage were my favorites in Noah, two of my favorites in all of wrestling. And to see their last match where Kotage was in tears, they had a one-minute match on his retirement show, which was so amazing, like how they did it. And uh, that's still one of the most memorable moments of the year. And, and uh, Saki Akai... Uh, her re re retirement was actually really cool, like a very happy moment. They had Nakamura show up on the Titan Tron, and she was shocked by the video. They couldn't show him. They they cut away from him on the video and silenced the, the audio. But uh, we know that she was shocked by it, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, one of the more emotional moments in a good way of the year. So uh, some good stuff there. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it, WH. What, what about uh, Sarai uh, uh, returning back to Japan? Oh, yes. Um, Oh, yeah. Uh, I was going to mention that because one of the best match of the year of any company, men, women, Joshi, whatever, uh, Sari versus Arisa Nakajima from August 25th was an absolutely incredible match. Everybody needs to go watch it and find it how you can. Uh, they just had – that was the ultimate version of Sari or Saray like, that you could ever have, and it was so perfect. It was really, a, really a great match, hard-hitting and just a lot of heart, a lot of spirit. And sorry, you got to really get put over at the end, too. So great run so far for her of the year. And uh, now with uh, Skabon, she can actually do stuff she was doing in NXT once again. So she gets to bet the best of both worlds in her career as well. All right. And some more bullet points. Uh, Jake Lee beat Kiyomiya to become the new GHC heavyweight champion. Uh, and like I said before, he brought a lot of stability to that belt and and, and, and really established him. Um I, I'm not a big fan of good looking guys. Terrible name. Uh, some some really questionable people in terms of quality of wrestlers in that group. Uh, you know, Tadasuke, what the fuck? Uh, New, Japan, New Japan Cup final. Uh, Sonata beat David Finley to win the cup and secure a title shot against Okada. Uh, Keiji Muto slash Great Muto was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, but my favorite part of that whole thing was like uh, Inamura, like walking around America as as Keiji Muto's uh, bag boy, and uh, he seemed to have a lot of fun. You know, he's like, "Oh shit, this company's cool." I, I bet he was like, "I want to work for WWE." I think most people in Japan want to work for WWE now. Uh, New Japan Sakura Genesis from uh, from uh, April twenty eighth. Uh, Mayu Itani challenged Mercedes for the. I did GP women's title after uh, Maya defeated AZM and uh, Hazuki HZK. Uh, just a little inside joke because Mercedes doesn't know how to pronounce Azumi. Uh, Sonata won. I was very shocked by this, by the way. Sonata won the IWGP title from Okada in this. And, and, and just thoughts on on these things, uh, Karen. What did you think about these these uh, these bullet points? Um. So Jake becoming GAC champion. Oh yeah, sorry, I had scrolled past it. Uh, I liked that they. I figured when Jake Lee came in, he was going to get the belt because they made a very big, very very big deal about him. Uh, I do like. I know you. Uh, I liked good looking guys. Uh, Jack Morris is critically underrated. Uh, and it's one of those things where I liked that Sonata finally won the New Japan Cup. He finally got that rematch with Okada. Uh, Kate, Mudo going to the Hall of Fame, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, Mayu, uh, Mercedes versus Azumi and Hazuki was. I was surprised that it went the way it went. Mayu challenging for it was great, uh, because they were setting up a bigger, a big match for uh, All Star Grand Queendom. Uh, and then yeah, Sonata finally, finally getting that win over Akata. 
great, but then they really don't do anything with Sonata, with Sonata for like the rest of 2023. Mm. Dylan, your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like that they at least did something a little different with Sonata. And, you know, to me, good-looking guys, I think we have to say, are superior to just five guys in terms of the name. Uh, you know, and we know that based on the fact that at the All Together show, Jake Lee's team actually beat Sonata's team, uh, which is the second time he lost to Noah this year because he was the one that lost in the Congo battle uh, with Soya beating Sonata early on. So uh, great love for the champion there doing that. But I like the idea on paper, freshen this guy up. It's just him I'm not a fan of, ultimately. So I, I, it's not that he's bad. I actually think he's a lot better than he used to be uh, in the ring. There's just not a lot that really makes me that interested in him. He's kind of boring, in my opinion. But ultimately, he, his title reign was to set up Naito winning at the Dome. And I accept that. I have no issue with that. And it happened. And that's cool. Uh, the Jake and Kaito match sucked uh, as a match, too. That was, like, easily the worst match of Jake's reign. Everything after that was really good. From the Nakajima match, Mar Fuji match was good. The Sugira match was a fantastic match. Uh, he did everything right pretty much in his title reign. He gets a little overhated on. And he is kind of, he's an easy target with the hat and the, the look and everything like that. But he's actually a good worker. Like, you know, and, and I, I like him and I respect his run. Um, the, you know, the everything going on with that was good. The, the Hall of Fame, I think Karen said it best. Whatever, Muto going into the Hall of Fame. But I, I, I love that we have this this negative energy that we've congregated onto this one show for KG Muto. This is the ultimate anti Muto First podcast. Lie. I think we've assembled today. Stop me when I'm lying about KG Muto. Okay, stop me when I'm lying. Five star Stardom's five star Grand Prix. Where start date was announced, which was July 23rd, and the the end date would be September 30th. Uh, a three-month tournament with 20, 20 wrestlers. This would not turn out to be a good idea. And I, I knew it at the time. And we'll, we'll talk about that. We talked about that. It's, one of, it's in my notes. I just wanted to mention it again. Keno and Manabu Soya defeated Yuma Aoyagi. And, uh, and and gone too soon from all Japan again. Dylan, Naoya, Nomura. They, they were the... New all Japan world tag team champions for a short time before losing to Congo. And uh, in good news, Shotaro Ashino finally fucking won something in all Japan. He won the this year's champion carnival. Unfortunately, he, he fractured his arm and he's he's not returned yet. Hopefully, early 2024, he comes back. I mean, I, I think he should beat Nakajima for that belt. I don't think it should be Ken. I think Kendo should eventually get his win back from Nakajima. But I think I don't I don't need Kento to be the fucking triple crown champion again for a while. I would love if Ashino, you know, defeated defeated Nakajima for that belt. I think it would it would give him a huge shot in the arm, no pun intended. Um, but uh Tom Nakano became a double champion in stardom. She she of course was the world of stardom champion, and then he, she she beat uh Mina Shirakawa, who beat Kamitani to become the Wonder Stardom champion as well and and then master master wado beat titan to win the best of the super juniors and new japan subsequently didn't do anything noteworthy with this fucking guy for the rest of the year and and dylan we'll, we'll start with you your your thoughts on, on on these bullet points here yeah uh, well you're totally right about wato he, he got the big win and did good. He really got to improve uh, from where he came in. Just this joke character. I remember the show way back now <laughs> when he came in. We did a show. Me and you and John Pollock were actually on the same show. And he hated that so much. I uh, hated how they've ruined Hirai Kawata, the best young lion in New Japan, by this stupid gimmick. And he actually improved a lot. And he's really become a guy that the fans have gotten into and did a lot of cool things. Uh, Ashino, I think we got to give credit to him and T-Hawk as well. Um... They had a great match at the end of the Champion Carnival. A really iffy tournament. Not a lot of great matches in it, but the final was well worth watching. Tiok had a wonderful match, too, winning the Glate title over um, Kaito Ishida in April that year, too. I just wanted to mention that out there. I think Tiok's had a really underrated year uh, just because he's in a stupid company, uh, like, over overall. Uh, but he does a lot of good things right. Ashino's awesome. Totally agree with you. I would love to see what they, they do with him going forward. 
Um, I I wanted to ask this of you guys, and especially Karen, because I you know of, of how much she's integrated in stardom. What do you think of the the All Star Grand Queendom show, and specifically the main event? Julia dropping the title to Tom Nakano because I've really, it, I don't want to say it's haunted me, but it's something I've thought about pretty much ever since it happened. That felt like almost, okay, because in years past, we'd had really good storytelling throughout the company uh, when it get, came down to the big matches of the year. The end of the year, you had it with Tommy and Shuri, and then Shuri and Julia the year after. This was a total 180 from that. We, we spent all this time building up Julia, and then we cut it really short after just a couple of matches. I thought it was a really big changing of the guard of the company in terms of how they built throughout the year. What did you think of that overall? Because I thought it's one of those things that's almost a turning point of the company, but for me in a negative way. But I wanted to see what you guys thought of it. Okay. Uh, well, I, I I don't think I've actually said this on post pro res before, but I, I think I've talked about it on other po uh, stardom related podcasts is that I don't, and I still don't understand what the urgency was for Julia to drop the belt so quickly, especially after previous champions, you know, Mayu, Utami, Shuri had monster year, year plus runs with the belt. And Julia had basically done everything up until that point that she could have done. I Part of me worries and wonders if the New Japan plans for the strong championship weighed into that. Or if, you know, the IW... Like, I don't know if it was that uh, what Bushi Fight wanted, what, what Bushi Fight wanted, what New Japan wanted, what Stardom wanted. They were all wanting different things at the same time. Part of me also wonders if... I don't know how because Tam d doesn't list her age. I don't know how old she is. I don't know if uh, if this knee injury could be leading up to uh, something, a retirement possibly. It's one of those things where you know, in interviews that I've heard with like Mayu and Tam and all of them, they're all like, I don't know if they're just stirring the pot, but they're floating the idea out there that you know they eventually want to settle down and get married. They're thinking about retiring, and it, it just felt like. I personally felt they took the belt off of Julia too soon. I prefer, I've seen Julia versus Tam in a series of great matches. The five-star Grand Prix final when Julia won it. Their hair versus hair match. This match was great for them, but uh, this was the match I was expecting at the end of this year. Or after the five-star. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. To the end of the year. I don't know what this, the giant sense of urgency to switch the belts on. And the same thing with Mina getting the belt taken off of her and put onto Tam just for Mariah to take it off of Tam like a month and a half later. It was the, I don't know if Shirakawa was supposed to take the belt off of Kamatani back in November when she got her jaw busted open. And this was just a quick, like, we'll give her the belt and then we'll deal with her later. I don't know where the booking is going with Star and this is th that Grand Queendom show is part of where it all started to spiral out of control for me. Yeah, for me, like this yeah. is like I totally Julia. agree with that. Yeah. Like Julia losing the belt so soon to Tom, like I I like again, like I felt like Karen and you do deal. Like, like I I think that should have been like the end of the year, this year. They should have saved it, right? Because that was the big storyline going into Julia's reign was like Tom was always going to be waiting the wings. And then she, you know, all, all you know, if you're following Tom Nakano's career, like you want you want her to see her be the the, the red champion, right? And I don't think she needed the, the the white belt. I don't I never understood why they took the belt off off uh Shirakawa so soon. Like and I feel like they were protecting Kamatani. They were they were they were closing the loop on that that rivalry with Kamatani, but they didn't want Mariah taking the belt off of Kamatani. So they figure if they they put the belt up and then put it drop it down, I don't know. But it's just I, it none of it made sense to me. It was very frustrating. It it just smacks of like you know like hot shotting and like oh uh, yeah. I, I think with Julia they I think they think you know we don't need her to be the red champion. We she's a big enough star. We want to put we want to put our bullshit American strong title on her. And because then maybe people will come to our shows in America to watch, watch, watch her. Um, I don't know what attendance figures are like for strong shows. I, I, and they're, again, they're I, all right. <laughs> they're all right because of Julia. So maybe there's something to that. Right. And, and the other people who work strong shows, 
I, 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 I just think it's short-sighted and, and it really makes me work. Like this is, I think the point where I'm starting to worry about stardom booking. I always thought for a year and a half before this, right? Like, like you, like you and Karen Dillon, like, I was like, this is the best booked company. It's, it's consistent. They do everything right. They push, they, they have a plan and they, and they stick to that plan. Like, uh, Julia versus Shuri, Shuri versus Utami the year before. It all made sense. And then, like, oh, Kamatani, we're going to make her a big fucking star by having her be the white belt champion for forever. She's going to beat Momo's record. She beat Momo to, to beat that record. Amazing. Like, just this is smart. And this is the point where it's like, okay, now we're going to have a three month long fucking five star Grand Prix. We have 20 fucking people in it. Too many. All right. It, it, this is like the problem with, with the G1 is you have too many fucking people in it. It's too long. You, you, no one cares about it. No one cared about the five star. By the end, by by the time you're into like month two, who's watching the fucking five all the matches of five star Grand Prix? Who's keeping up with the with the stats? Nobody. I'm sorry, unless you are a com complete stardom fan, like you only watch stardom. You have you don't even fucking read books and you don't fucking watch any television except for fucking stardom wrestling. You're not keeping up with everything that's happening in this fucking tournament. Same thing with the G1. I can't keep up with everything in the G1. I have to go back and read notes. That uh, from other people's fucking reports on post wrestling, you know, I can't keep up. Uh, this is the problem in Japan, like especially Bushin Road. They have tournaments that are too long, have too many people because they think we have to put everyone in there. No, you don't. You don't fucking need Chase Owens fucking in the fucking G1, okay? You don't need whoever the fuck was in the five star Grand Prix. You don't need like five of the people in the five star Grand Prix. You, you could have got rid of five fucking people from that and it would have been better. It could have been make it a month long. Perfect. No, they, and then, then you say, like, as, as we talked about, you get all these injuries at the end, like from here on in, all these injuries taken up pretty much the top end of the card. Wow. And you wonder why they're hurting at the box office right now is because fans cannot rely on getting a quality show. I'm seeing, being able to see their favorites live. Why would I go to a stardom show? Well, maybe my favorite wrestler that I want to go see is going to get injured because they're wrestling too much. Do you know what I mean? And the other problem is, is that when you have two stardom top tier talents with New Japan belts and New Japan runs a show the same weekend as a stardom show, those fans sell their tickets. I've seen people sell tickets because Julia is going to the United States for shows. I've seen people sell tickets because Mayu is going to to shows. And like the she Julia's announced her battle in the valley, right? That's the first first weekend in 2024 that they are running two shows in Osaka. Julia is missing that entire weekend in Osaka. That and that's a problem. New Japan booking should not be impacting stardom like this. That's right. This is why I always said keep stardom and New Japan separate because you New Japan does not give a shit about stardom. They don't. They're oh look, she's a star. Let's try to help her both boost our sales. On, on strong shows. Complete horse shit. Let's move on to Dominion. Hiromu defeated Wata. I I gotta say, this this title reign, it's 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 a, it's, it's gonna rec be a record breaking one for Hiromu, but I don't think he's it's done him any favors. I don't think he's done that belt any favors. It's just kind of it's Hiromu. Like I don't know. I don't get excited by Hiromu matches anymore because I think it's the same old, same old uh with him. Uh, Blackpool Combat Club invaded uh, New Japan to help out their boy uh, Shota Umino, uh, and they uh, they lost the uh, the challenge for the Never Six Men belts to uh, Tanahashi, Okada, and Ishii. Uh, Brian Danielson then showed up on the on the Titan Tron or the New Japan Tron, and he challenged Okada. Much of the much to the light of all the fans in New Japan, even though they weren't going to see the match, I did. Uh, it's a you know Okada accepted the challenge for Forbidden Door. And uh, and Sonata defeated the returning, very very uh, big smile Yoda Suji, and his twin brother Stuntman. Uh, I forget his brother's name. Shota Suji. Shota Suji to retain his IWGP Heavyweight Title, but uh, eventually, uh, good old Yoda there. He's he's gonna win that belt one day, one of these days in in the near future. All together again, six nine twenty three. A very fun show overall. Uh, my highlights were the last two matches, Hiromu. Takashi, Atsuki Aoyagi, and Amasuka, uh, Amakusa, sorry, Amakusa versus Master Wado, Rising Hayato, and Hayata. Uh, not so much for Hayata, of course. And then, of course, the main event, Hiroshi Tanashi, Kento Miyahara, and Kaido Kimiya taking on Kazuchika Okada. Yuma Aoyagi, 
and Keno. Fucking Okada, Aoyagi, and Keno. I fucking love that team. I, I, I wish they could somehow bring them back together in, in another tag in the future. Um, I love this show. And then uh, Forbidden Door in Toronto. Big, big weekend for all of post wrestling. We had our big meet and greet with Poison Rana and, and, and John Way doing their, their thing before and after the show. Um, I thought that show was too long. Osprey retained uh, his U.S. title in Canada. Oh, no, sorry. He regained his United States title in Canada that he lost in Japan to a Canadian. Very interesting booking. Uh, Osprey and Omega did way too much in that stupid match. I mean, he fucking kicked Ken Chan kicked out of him. Uh, Tiger Driver 91. Dylan, I think you will agree with me. No one should ever kick out of a Tiger Driver 91. And actually, no one should use a Tiger Driver 91 outside of Mitsuhara Masawa. Rest, rest his soul. And Danielson submitted Okada, even though, like Toshiaki Kawada, his arm got broken way, really early in the match and and dylan your thoughts overall on especially these two these these three big shows dominion all together again and and forbidden door two yeah well you know you made a great point but you know who didn't listen to you about nobody should kick out of the tiger driver 91 shota umino <laughs> as that exactly happened <laughs> in, in, in their match uh just a, a few weeks ago so Maybe we're just thinking differently than some of these new schoolers are now. Um, but yeah, it was a really cool show. Uh, the main event was, you know, like I said, it's disappointing because it's them and because of the broken arm and everything. But 99% of wrestlers who ever lived, if this was their best ever match, they would be thrilled in doing backflips for it. Uh, it's just the high level you expect from an, an absolute legend like Brian Danielson and Okada, who's doing some of the best work of his career. Uh, the international title four-way was really good with Cassidy, Shibata, Zach, uh, Garcia, I remember. Osprey Omega, I agree with what you guys said earlier. The dome match was the better match uh, of the two, I think, pretty easily, in my, in my opinion. Um, the all-together show, again, what you said, I you know, I remember I, we did a show about this on the Eastern Larian, and one of our YouTube comments on that show was, like, disbelief from somebody who was like, man, man. There was a time these companies working together would sell out the Dome, and they did a really disappointing number, uh, less than Dominion, which itself was a disappointing number. And that was the point where my stomach kind of had a dark vibe to it, because this should have been a huge deal. They wanted it to be, and it, it didn't pay off, unfortunately. But the main event was awesome. Uh, totally agree with you on Keno, Yuma, uh, Okada. Great team. Ayagi, I love him so much, as I always do. Anytime he comes up, I will point out how great he was. Dominion. Uh, Suji getting a title shot was something really different than they usually do. I thought it was really cool. The match was all right. I, it wasn't anything special, in my opinion. And the whole show wasn't that special. The AEW six-man tag with the the, the Blackpool Combat Club was the best match of that show. Uh, great match. Well worth watching. Great main event and Forbidden... Uh, not Forbidden Door, but uh, the all-together show. And the Forbidden... A few good matches, too. So, all good stuff. Uh, Could have been better, honestly, on all three of them, though, in my opinion. Karen, before we get to your thoughts, I just got to say one thing. I, I too, love that four-way at Forbidden Door. And I, I want to see, you know what I want to see? I want to see fucking Katsuyori Shibata form a permanent tag team with Orange Cassidy. Yes, I said it. Fucking Orange Cassidy has opened my eyes because he fucking now uses that gimmick, which I hated before. He now uses it the way it should be used as a psychological tool to, to make his opponents underestimate him before he unleashes his awesome, actually, his actually awesome pro wrestling skills that I knew he had in him when he was in the fucking colony. Anyways, Kerry, your thoughts on on our last set of bullet points? Uh, with Dominion, I, I never thought that uh, Master Wado would be the one to win Best of Super Juniors before either show Andio, and here we are, and they did nothing with him. I know what they're trying to do with Hiromu's run. He's just held the belt so many times for so long. I just don't care anymore. I'm not invested in it. It seems the only people he ever seems to really lose to are Robbie Eagles, Desperado, and uh, Ishimori. Those are the that those are only seem to be the people that the company is willing to really like, make Hiromu consistently lose to in a title match scenario. Even though he's lost to Yo, he's lost to Show. It's one of those things where they're not. They've built the whole entire division around him that I worry what will happen if he ever goes heavyweight. Because there'll be this gaping hole 
that they've never it's the same thing with okada and Ta- tanahashi and all them there's there's too many gaping holes that if, if one person leaves the whole thing falls apart because they haven't built anybody else to be a consistent credible threat to him except for a handful of hand selected people um i liked i i know you don't like the never six man belt i i always find these matches to be kind of fun when it has people i'm interested in the blackpool combat club showing up was great a great fun thing for me uh yoda suji i want to go to his dentist he's got like the best teeth i've ever seen uh all together again f- again fun show i agree with the match picks forbidden door all right, so for post, y'all need to stop picking things that are either my mom's birthday weekend or the one weekend a year I go on vacation. Because the two times you guys ever do big things is, and I can't go to them. Hey, uh, that's, that's TK's <laughs> fault, not not ours. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with all the points as well. Like, uh, Omega Osprey, like I said earlier, I like that one better. Okada, you know, breaking Danielson's arm it happens. Uh. I just don't know what to expect for New Japan Forbidden Door if there is one in 2024. I don't know if all of these people that AEW has pulled over and signed from New Japan, if it'll it'll feel the same now that they're on the other side of the fence or how it's all going to fit together. Um, but yeah, it was it was a good show. I just need shows not to be late on Sunday nights because I'm an old lady. Put it on a Saturday. Yeah. Or or, or have brunch. Make it make it make it an early afternoon. You know, like uh, our post wrestling zone, Eric Marcotte, he, he you know, does all our UFC coverage. He, he went to the meet and greet to, to meet his favorite wrestler, Sonata. And then he could not leave the building because they said, if you, if you want to leave the, you can't leave the building. We want you to stay for the ROH tapings, but I, I don't want to watch ROH. I just want to, I want to come back for, go have lunch or dinner or supper and come back for, I think, collision. And they said, nope. If you leave, you can, you have to pay again. So so Eric Marcotte and Brent from New Jersey were stuck to watch oh, the fucking no. ROH tapings. They were in the fucking the, the Air Canada Center at Scotiabank Theater, whatever the fuck it's called now, for five fucking hours. <laughs> oh, just so Eric could meet his favorite wrestler, Sonata. I mean, I, I I I would do the same for Sonata, let's be well, honest. There you go. There you go Karen. <laughs> There you go. You're honest about your feelings. So, and so is Eric Marcotte. He was like, eh, I, I, I got to meet him. It was worth amazing. it. Worth it. It was worth it. Anyways, uh, let's continue. Uh, Katsuhiko Nakajima, Noah One Night Dream in July, the Kenta Miyahara in a dream match. And now they will face each other for the All Japan Triple Crown at All Japan's uh, big show coming up in January. Um, I don't know who's going to win that. I think Nakajima is going to retain his belt for that for that show. Um, and Kendall will get his win back in another way. Uh, to, uh, the 2023 G1 Climax Final, which uh, Karen and I both did uh, a multitude of reviews for for post. Uh, Naito defeats Okada to win the G1 for the third time and will challenge Sonata for the heavyweight title at uh, WK 2024. I-, I think my favorite match is Karen... Dylan from 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 the G1 climax were 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 surprisingly El Fantasmo versus Will Osprey and and believe it or not fucking Taichi channeling uh Siyoshi Kosaka taking on uh fucking Akira Maeda Great Okan here. Dylan, what did you think about the fucking G1 climax this year? Well, that <laughs> when you say it like that, I mean that you we've got some strong take here and i love that uh, i love the comparison i love the akira maeda reference which i'm very happy to be on the show for that i didn't think it would be used with tai chi but sure uh both those matches would be in my picks too <laughs> to be honest with you i also want to shout out ishii and eddie kingston i thought it was one of the best matches and uh mikey nichols and ishii as well i thought it was a great match with just hard hitting probably scared half of the audience but i love the effort that mad mikey put in the tournament he really impressed me and uh, if he is listening, I want you to know I appreciate your effort and work in the G1 for somebody who I didn't have any expectations for. He really showed out. Uh, the final was a great spectacle with Okada and Naito. Uh, very successful. If you are a New Japan fan and a fan of their style of wrestling, uh, I thought they did a great job encapsulating that. I don't always love their style together, actually. But still, I thought it was a really well-done match overall. And Kento and Nakajima was one of the absolute best matches of the year, in my opinion. 
I think it was perfect. I was shocked Nakajima won. At that point, we didn't know he was leaving Noah, uh, but we still thought Kento is kind of on a, a bigger star role at that point in time. But it was really good storytelling. It allowed both companies to gain something out of it. I don't know if Noah gained anything out of it at the end of the day, but we'll see. Uh, they still kind of intermingle somewhat uh, very lightly on the Monday Magic and whatnot. And we're going to see Kento and Nakajima again at the end of the year, like you said. Um, I would love if it was a time limit draw or something like that. I just can't imagine Nakajima beating Kento twice and All Japan being okay with that. Uh, but I could see a draw happening if they really wanted to do something and stretch it out. But I think the yeah. most likely option is Kento winning. I, I do have to say, uh, getting the title back. And we'll see what they do after that. You know, I, I think what you're saying, actually, about the timeline draw, I think that makes more sense because I, I don't think it needs to be for the Triple Crown, like Kento beating Nakajima. Like, I, I do think the best thing to do with, with Nakajima is yeah, DC champion yeah. is to put over Ashino when he comes back, right? Because he still can say, like, I never got my title shot after winning the yeah. Marvel. So I'm cashing it in right now. But Karen, uh, One Night Dream, Nakajima versus Miyahara, and, and, and overall thoughts about uh the, the g1 climax and, and 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 talking about my good close personal friend fucking eddie kingston the highlight of this his fucking meeting with kawada at kawada's restaurant and fucking wearing the long and winding road road fucking t-shirt at the at the fucking ribera steakhouse uh yeah with nakajima and miyahara it was one of those things like i saw it and i was like i like this i want more of it and i'm glad we're getting more of it g1 it's it blurred all together by the end of it. You you saw me by day, the final day. Oh, I was you like, saw I, me. I was with you. I, I was right there. Like, you know what? I just I can't. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I don't even remember favorite matches. I mean, Osprey and ELP, Taichi no Khan, those would probably be two of the ones. That Ishii match that uh Dylan mentioned would be another one. I I think I actually the other day just like got rid of the notebook that had all my G1 notes in it from this year. Um, but it's just one of those things where I'm glad I got through it. I don't know if I can do it again next year because my office decided to split up orientation week. So most of August is going to be me and work. So I don't even know if I can watch any of the G1. Mm. But I hope that whoever they have in the G1 next year, that they must like the five-star Grand Prix, and I'll say it again, quantity does not equal quality. It doesn't need to be the biggest field ever. I know people need to lose, but you know what? Shorter time limits, time limit draws. Pull up your big boy boots and let people lose that need to lose, not people that are there just to designated to lose. That's right. Yeah. Kaido Kimia got fucked in the G1 climax and I was not happy about it. Oh, uh, he, he should have pinned Sonata so he could have he could have been the match the defense instead of evil. That's right. Damn he it. gave us evil versus Sonata and bullshit lumberjack match. Uh in, in better news, N1 victory finals in September, Go Shizaki, bless his heart, he came back, defeated Keno to win the tournament, but would lose to Jake Lee in his challenge for the GHC heavyweight tilt. Uh, in September, Zack Sabre Jr. made IWGP history by having the most successful number of defenses of any IWGP branded belt with 13 wins and counting. But and that and, and as of this recording, he has hit the uh, the 14 win mark. And this is back in November. And and you know, like good for him. You know what? Like I've always said, like Zach should be made a star. I think he should have been. He should. I think eventually he should get IWGP World Heavyweight title. Um, but hey, you know what? If he never wins that belt, he can look back on this reign and be proud because he made a belt that looks like shit. What I didn't think was a good idea in the first place. And he made it count be because he is a great fucking in-ring performer. Uh, and Kyrie gave a farewell speech to certain fans of her, ahead of her return to WWE at Crown Jewel. Crown Jewel, sorry. And joining... Uh, damage control and and and, and god damn it, i'm gonna say this i i watched survivor series at the poison rana uh survivor series watch long party and god damn it, that war games match was fucking fun and i'm just gonna say that i love damage control when they turn on bailey i'll be a little sad because i like bailey and damage control but it, it's gonna happen and then 
Dakota is going to become the new fucking spokesperson for damage control. And, and hopefully Jeremy will get better. And Kabuki Warrior is going to win the women's tag champions, tag team championships. Once again, Eel is going to be on top for much longer as WB women's champion. But uh, anyway, Dylan, your, your thoughts on, uh, yeah, go Zach and Kyrie. Well, first of all, Mega agree. War Games was a bona fide hoot. I uh, love seeing EO bring back the old NXT trash can off the cage spot that we had there. That was one of the highlights of my uh, the whole show. My grandma stood up and went nuts when that happened. She had never seen it before. <laughs> so she loved that. And I loved it too. It was a great match. I uh, love all of them. Kyrie with new hair came back in. Uh, we we got to love that as well. Uh, even though her, it was a shame her starter run didn't have a lot more singles matches to it, but she still was awesome. Uh, I know a lot of people criticize her and her run, but not me. I think her run was like all good. I love the 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 restart team that she had with the artist bouts. I thought she was great in pretty much all of those matches, and I think she'll be missed a lot. Hopefully, they have good things ahead of her and for her. And I love your idea of the Kabuki Warriors winning the women's tag team titles, uh, Zach. Uh, congratulations to him. He too had uh, new hair this year as well with the blonde and he represents well with the TV dinner title that he holds and Hey, go. He's held together with bubble gum and duct tape at this point, but by God, he still was able to win that tournament. So God bless him. Uh, like you said, and he was really good. His match with Jake was really good too. So a uh, shout out to go. We love him. Uh, Zach Kyrie. How can you say anything that good about these people? You can't. Karen, Karen, I know you're going to say you're going to bury Kyrie, aren't you? Oh, yeah. You know me. Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna work, start work my way to Kyrie. So one, Goshiozaki, my K-pop king, he is back. Uh, I I like love that he came back. I love that, you know, he fought Keno. I love that he fought Jay Lee. Like, literally that whole sentence that you have on our notes, those are, like, all my favorites, like, standing in a row right there. Uh, Zach having this month this great run with the IWGP TV championship it's one of those things where you're talking about you know new new year new hair i believe that when suzuki goon broke up taichi gave zach his blonde streak cuz as the you know part of the breakup zach got the blonde in the breakup um Ooh. and yeah so cuz that's why he got so mad when osprey was talking about zach to taichi so uh anyway kyrie I will fight anyone who says that Kyrie's run in stardom was not a good one. She was brought in to do a job, and that was to elevate stardom. Her being in stardom wasn't about her. It was about the talent that filled the spot that she left when she left the company. And most of her matches were with people that either she had re like history with prior to leaving or people who came up after her leaving, like Utami and Kamatani or Starlight Kid. So it's one of those things where I will fight anyone on any given day in any NXT parking lot over, over Kyrie. Um, I I sat through Crown Jewel to, watch, to see if she would be there. I sat through Survivor Series. I am glad that my girls are back together and that they're going to have a good time. The end. That's right. What do you, and, and, and Dylan, Dakota becoming the new mouthpiece of damage control. What do you think? Hey, listen, I'm all about Dakota Kai. I I, I loved Evie and her run and stardom in the back. Yeah. Uh, she loves video games. She said her crush when she was a girl was Devil Jin from Tekken. Tekken. So how can I not Same. respect somebody like that? <laughs> Shout out to Dakota Kai. Uh, love, like you said, all the girls got to respect me. Yeah. Karen, what, what do you think? I, I think Bailey's going to get kicked out, you know, before Mania, and then and then Dakota is going to be the, uh, the the English spokesperson and. And, and she's going to fucking hang out with Eel, like, in her corner, even though when she comes back from, from her injury. I I would love to see Dakota remain part of that group. I wonder if, should Bailey be kicked out if a certain uh, Monet maker may make a return to the WWE in 2024? That's where my heart is leaning at the moment. Because I want that Bailey versus EO program, but I feel oh. like ba Bailey needs allies right now, and I don't feel like any other, other than the damage control, she's she's, uh, she's kind of short on friends at the moment. It'll be so. Bailey, 
Sasha's gonna come back. All right. Cause I think so. I think I think the boss is gonna return. Cause 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 Tony he's not gonna sign her. He's he's like think he's getting filled flashbacks probably with her. I don't know why. But she's gonna go back, she's gonna go back home just like Phil did. She's gonna join up with fucking Bailey and they're gonna fight the fucking Kabuki Warriors. You're gonna take those belts off of fucking uh uh, Piper Niven and and uh, uh, Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green. They they're gonna win the belts from them, and 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 they're gonna build up to fucking Sasha and and Bailey versus Kyrie and Asuka. And I'm here. I'm here for it. All right. Let's give me what I want. <laughs> give me what I want. That's right. Give me what I want. <laughs> uh, Suzuki defeated Micah to become the youngest woman to win the five star Grand Prix, and they are now in what is was considered what is a, a cursed tournament. But they're going to face each other for the red belt, the vacated red belt uh, at, 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 at the Wrestle Queendom coming up. Uh, destruction in Rio Goku from October. Uh, Yuya Uemura def- left Impact before it could become rebranded TNA again to join Just Five Guys. I don't know if that's a better move, to be quite honest with you. Uh, also, Sonata defeated Evil in a bullshit lumberjack match to keep his world title. Uh, <coughs> Nosawa. <gasps> Brought back the GHC hardcore title. Oh, sorry, that's I just falling start feeling sleepy right now. I don't know why. Uh, the, and, and for that belt, Masada Tanaka, he's still around. You know, he still looks great. He defeated uh, Ninja Mac to become the new champion, but that's okay. Ninja Mac would then win the win the title about a month later, and 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 he's gonna he's been he's defended that thing in like some crazy ass fucking like death match and. In, in Noah recently. I haven't watched it, but I saw the pictures oh. of it. Yuma Aoyagi defended his triple crown against perennial foe and partner Kento Miyahar and, and sadly defeated in what, like, probably, it's in my top three matches of the year that I've seen. Loved it. I Thank God. God bless Yuma Aoyagi. I love this man. Karen, like, you can leave New Japan. Just make Yuma Aoyagi your favorite wrestler of all time and, <laughs> and, and, and you'll be happy, right? Uh, afterwards, Katsuka Nakajima Pissed off because he brought flowers for Kento Miyahara. Was going to challenge him for the TC. Smack Kento with the flowers instead. And then challenge Aoyagi for the TC, which he he would then win. Uh, and and this is why I do think he's eventually going to go to New Japan because I think he wants to win the Grand Slam himself. And uh, and then also in other news, Hir- Hiromu Takashi won the uh, DDT Ironman title from uh, either a chair or a ladder, uh, something. I I don't know. Um, and Karen, your, your thoughts on, uh, Yuya coming back, uh, Sonata beating evil, uh, GC uh, hardcore title and, uh, Yuma versus Nakajima. Okay. So Suzu, Micah at, well, was, was a great way to finish the five star, them becoming the main event at Queendom. It wasn't what I expected. I know the plan is probably for Suzu, but gosh, a stars above. I want Micah to win it so badly. But I don't know if they want to have another member of DDM win it three years in a row. It just it just makes me wonder what's next for Micah if she doesn't win it. Uh, yeah, Yuya, the way they sent Yuya off from from Impact with with the breaking up of his tag team with Joe Henry was it was it was bittersweet. I I was enjoying their tag team. It was like the one thing in Impact, one of the things in Impact I really enjoyed watching. Uh, Sonata versus Evil. It should have been Kaito Kiyomiya. It should have been Kaito Kiyomiya. I will sing this to my dying breath. That should have been Kaito Kiyomiya. <laughs> uh, Noah, I don't know. I don't think they, they... They have too many belts. They didn't need the Hardcore Championship to come back. Uh, the Yuma Aoyagi match against Miyahara and the Miyahara match uh, against... Or sorry, the, the Aoyagi match against Nakajima. If you have not seen either of these matches... Add these to your top 10 list for this year. I love, I don't watch much All Japan, but I loved everything in these matches. And then, yeah, apparently at some point with this Iron Man title, Hiromu ended up in a bra. I don't know if it was this match or another match at Ultimate Party in November, but he ends up in a bra at some point. Picture is kind of funny. Dylan? You know, I like to think we've all been there at some point where we're fighting and we end up in a bra. It just happens. You know, so I really relate to Hiromu on that. Y- Yuemura leaving TNA, 
It, it does. It does. It totally does. Uh, you know, Waymura, he was such a great part of TNA, and they've actually done some pretty good things this year with Shelly, Josh Alexander, uh, Osprey, and Mike Bailey. Uh, they've had good matches, Osprey and Alexander as well. Uh, Waymura is a great wrestler. We all love him very much. But, you know, Karen, nah, she, she spoke earlier about Waffle House, and I wasn't happy about that. But there is Slender another it. restaurant that I have to take – and I'm taking aim at another restaurant right now because Five Guys is the most overrated, expensive, bullcrap restaurant that there's ever been in the history of the United States of America, this great country. I will not stand by their bullshit prices. A burger, a fries, shake, $20? Are you kidding me for this? Whataburger clears your asses every day. So listen, Five Guys, you might have got the title in New Japan, but the burger chain title, you guys fucking suck. Whataburger clears you, and I'm sure there's many other places. So bad decision by Waymura joining them. Uh, if there is a Whataburger faction in New Japan, I will join them immediately. Uh, regardless, though, Suzu and Micah, yeah, I hated that they made their tournament win feel so not big like we saw last year uh, with Julia winning. You got this epic celebration. The awards came out. They did it to all the people in the tournament. They gave them awards. This year, they didn't give them shit. They just gave, you know, gave her the attire, and that was it, pretty much. It was right away. And now you see them in this situation with the Queendom again. They're the backup plan, pretty much, with the injuries. And that sucks, because they're both great wrestlers. They deserve a lot better. Uh, and I hope that Micah wins as well. But Suzu's a, a wonderful performer as well. I don't have anything bad about it. And, um, you know... The shocking thing, uh, well, no, uh, Aoyagi, totally agree with what you guys said. Aoyagi and Kento match of the year level match. Aoyagi, I love him so much, and he's the he's the man in wrestling, one of the MVP candidates this year. I was shocked at you, WH, because why did you stretch so far to bring up the hardcore title coming back? You did not give a shit about that. Don't lie to the, the people out there. You I know you want to slander Nasala because I hate that fucking guy so much. I just hate that guy. Good. So I gotta bring it back. Fuck every Nosawa. Fucking... He's an idiot. He is an idiot. I hate that guy. Like, and and this GHC hardcore title coming back is <laughs> such bullshit. But anyways, what about Hiroma winning the, sorry, the Iron Man title? Like I said, I think at one point the belt actually won itself. Like the belt was the champion. Somehow and, that happens in DDT, uh, DDT man. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of crazy things happen there. I will say, yeah, exactly. You know, uh, Brooks was a good champion, I thought he did a good job for them and made him a little better as time went along. You know, Chris Brooks made the best decision not to go back to England during the pandemic, <laughs> made the best decision of his life to stay, stay in Japan, stay in DDT. I think he's found. The, the best home for, for, for a guy of, of like, you know, like the thing with, with Chris Brooks, he's a, he's a very talented wrestler. Unfortunately, he's very, he's, he's, he's quite slight compared to like other people. I, but I think it doesn't matter in DDT, you know? So and he's done very, very well for himself in the last three years. Okay. We're just going to uh, right, both rush through the last part of the year. Demolition stage from Noah in Fukuoka, October 28th, Marafuji and Sugiera defeat uh, Axis in their last match for the foreseeable future as Nakajima uh, decided to leave Noah for for, uh, for for who knows for how long. Um, I don't think forever. I'm sure he'll show up either as a freelancer or back on the roster. But um, he decided to go out with his, his good buddy Go Shizaki uh, to, and losing to Fuji and Marafuji and Sugiera. Uh, Karen's favorite uh, 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 Drew McIntyre Jr. defeated Dr. Wagner Jr. Jr. Uh, and, and ended his lengthy and very good, I always have to be very good, GHC national title reign. Uh, Kano took, uh, takes the GHC heavyweight title from Jake Lee. Uh, Nakajima defeats Aoyagi to win the Triple Crown on uh, November 5th and will face Kento at All Japan's upcoming big show. Uh, Great Muda does some bullshit sports entertainment stuff. To help Noah in their economic doldrums, not realizing it's just kind of dumb shit that has put their business in the toilet by 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 being shot uh, on a farm that he owns in the Japanese 
countryside and he finds a abandoned baby and decides to miss it. Weird. And then it's gonna give birth to like his daughter becoming a wrestler. I I don't know. Who cares? I I don't even know why I'm fucking talking about this because it's stupid. Uh, Osprey decides to leave New Japan. And Dylan, to your point, they should have waited to announce this. I like you're so right. Like everything that he's going to do uh, from now until next February is gonna be like. Just like, well, who cares? Because we know he's leaving. He's going to go to AEW. He's going to start wrestle part-time for New Japan for big shows. But for the most part, most part, he he got a great deal from TK. TK is going to let him live in, in the UK. He's going to do two TV shows uh, a week and then like a pay-per-view every month. He's, he, he does have to go on the road for them. They don't really do house shows. Um, so it, it's a great it's a great benefit for, for Osprey. I'm sure... He he was entertained the idea of going to WB. He apparently he has a massive phobia of moving to your country, Karen and Dylan. I, you know, I, don't I mean, know. I I want to leave here every day, but I have a no. mortgage and a dog, so I'm not going anywhere. Uh, and uh, Tom Tom Nakano had to vacate the red belt due to injury injuries sustained in her match against uh, Natsuko Tora at Nagoya Golden Fight. And uh, and then our last point, we just talk about Stardom's Nagoya Big Winter Show. Uh, Julia defended her uh, strong women's title against uh, Azumi. Aphrodite reformed. Utami Hayashishida and Saya Kamatani defeated the Divine Kingdom, the team of Micah and Mega Bane, who I've, I've not seen. I don't know what this team is like. You have to, to enlighten me, guys, to win the vacant goddess tag titles and the, uh, you know, and then uh, Suzuki, Suzuki defeated Hasaki and to, to retain her five star Grand Prix. Winner's contract. I hate these kind of gimmick matches. I, I really fucking hate that. Don't put these 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 upcoming title shots on the line. I don't like that. And they they will fight, and she will face Suzuki. Will face Micah for the red belt at Dream Queendom uh, at the end end of December, uh, December 29th. And uh, Karen, uh, thoughts on, uh, on on our last set of bullet points here, and then Dylan, and then we'll wrap things up. Uh, I was I, I I enjoyed Nakajima's last match in Noah with Axis. I w- I was a I was a shameless Axis fan girl before Go got injured and he you know vanished away. I was happy for Jack. Jack Morris has worked really hard to become like you know one of their top foreign talents over Noah. Keno with the GHC belt. I mean, if you're gonna have someone that's gonna supposedly semi main event their biggest show of the year, he he. It can always just play into his story that he's bitter that the company just doesn't doesn't want to believe in him or doesn't think that he can do it. Uh, Nakajima Aoyagi was a great match. Want to watch it again? Excited for New Year's Eve to see Nakajima versus Kento. Uh, the yes, Great Muda's daughter, the Great Sakuya, will be de- debuting at Noah the New Year in the one women's match that is on the card. It is a tag match. Uh, she is tagging with Nagisa Nozaki, who went freelance from Pro Wrestling Wave against Haruka Umesaki and Miyuki Takase, who are a tag team. Osprey leaving New Japan, it should have been announced after the Dome and or after New Year's Dash. It, I know they wanted to do it to sell Wembley tickets. They should have, they shouldn't have done it because now it's just like, I just don't, I mean, not that I don't care about what Osprey does for the next couple of months, but it just feels like there was no sense of urgency. If he wasn't going to know W, if he wasn't going to WWE, I don't see the why they had why there was the need to announce it this early. Tam, I hope she gets well soon. I it's one of those things where I don't know how much of the plan if Tam was supposed to lose the belt in Osaka last month to Suzu to build to Queendom. And now they're just doing damage control and trying to make it all work. Uh Micah versus Micah and Megan Bain. They were really strong, but Micah really had nobody left to tag with because for some reason they didn't want to have her tag with Tekla and they didn't want to have her tag with my Sakurai in the, in the series. Um, but yeah, Utami is finally back after two months. Kamatani's back after her elbow injury in July. Uh, Hazuki versus Suzu is a good watch. If you want to watch some crazy angry girl, angry girl wrestling, which I always love. Uh, Julia versus uh, Azumi also fine. Great match. And, and Dylan, your thoughts, and then uh, we'll get some plugs in, and then we'll we'll call it a we'll call it a year. Oh my gosh! That's right, uh, and and uh, you know, 
so much that happened this year, and I love that we got through so much here. And this was very cool not to do the show. I will say that. Um, Ayagi, again, I, it's sad that he kind of got passed aside to, to move to the Kento and Nakajima thing just so fast. But he went out with a bang. The Kento, uh, excuse me, the, the Yuma and Nakajima match was awesome as well. Um, Muto, I don't care about it. Uh, great Saki. Uh, I'm happy to see Nozaki uh, come in, and, and that's very cool. Noah's women's division is so goofy. It doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Uh, uh, hopefully they do some good things because they have a lot of talented people like her and Takase in there. Osprey. Uh, Stardom, I'll end with Osprey. Stardom, uh, Karen was totally right. The Julian Azumi match was really good, and so was Hazuki and uh, Suzu. We got to give our prayers up to, to Tom Nakano. We're walking that Tom road right now. We need her back. And uh, I will never believe she will retire as she is an, an understudy of Atsushi Onita. So that means that uh, I, I believe she will tease her retirement for the next 20 years in all likelihood. Uh, Osprey, I think the main thing with that, announcing it so fast with, for AEW, they wanted to get the jump because they knew uh, your boy, WH Phil, was going to WWE. I think someone must have tipped them off and they needed to, they panicked and announced this to get a one up on WWE. And uh, they, you know, fuck New Japan in their world. It didn't matter. But I agree with both of you. And they should have waited if there was any fairness. But there is no fairness in wrestling, whether it's Japan, yeah. America, or the entire world. That's what we've proved this year. That's right. Lucha, Pro Res, Sports Entertainment. People who think, Oh, I I want back. I don't want backstabbing and politics in professional wrestling. Everyone should be friends. Are you fucking insane? Are you fucking insane? It, it's a it's a big money business. There's going to be backstabbing, politics, and no one no one's going to be not everyone's going to be friends with each other. And most probably people in wrestling probably fucking hate each other. They probably do because they're all jealous and they want each other's spots. Anyways, Dylan, thank you so much for coming on to this show. Always a pleasure to have you. We'll have you back on in 2024 to talk about something. But tell everyone, if people who, who might be hearing you for the first time, where can they find most of your work? Definitely. My main show is Eastern Lariat, at Eastern Lariat on Twitter, at Eastern Lariat on Instagram. Follow the Instagram. It's really cool. Uh, Twitter gives you news in Japanese pro wrestling. Instagram, you get a history lesson every single day. I post it's a new day of, uh, you know, maybe a birthday wish here and there. Lots of fun stuff. You want to hear me talk about American wrestling, check out Wrestle Update, my podcast. Uh, I do another day on these, uh, who writes a little bit for posts now and then when you do video game reviews. Um, he, he tried to put over Fight Forever, but I told him that was bullshit. Fight Forever sucks uh, at the end of the day. But still, uh, we talk about AEW, WWE on there. Uh, follow me at Viva underscore zero. Uh, that's my... Uh, uh, Twitter handle dedicated to Ray, my favorite Joshi wrestler ever. Rest in peace to her. And uh, most importantly, though, thank you both of you for welcoming me on this show. It was a ton of fun. It was great talking to Karen for the first time at WHU. I I love you, man. You're always the best. Yes, and I look forward to Karen's uh, future appearance in 2024 on the Eastern Lair podcast. <laughs> and Karen, uh, you got any plugs for us? Do I have plugs? I always have plugs. So I will be covering Stardom Dream Queendom on December 29th for postwrestling.com. So, of course, most of my content, as you guys know, is over at Post. Bruce Lord and I will be bringing the band back together again this coming Sunday for the Post Wrestling Cafe for New Japan's World Tag League Finals. And this month's Dream Slam Monthly will be on December 31st, which is a Sunday as opposed to Saturday, just because there are a couple of shows that run right before the end of the year. And I want to get them all on there and get as much stuff ready for the new year. And then we will, I will be back with you, sir, in January to do this all over again. That's right. January 6th, it's tentative. Um, we couldn't do like the fourth or the fifth because I, I do work those days. I could not get them off. Uh, it's okay. We're, me and Karen will talk about Wrestle Kingdom. We'll talk about New Year's Dash. I, I will somehow fit all these. I will somehow fit 10 hours of wrestling over two days <laughs> to talk about them. Uh, two times two days, speed. Two, 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 two days later. <laughs> um, and, and, and we'll have fun. We're going to kick off 2023, 2024 in, in a nice way. And we'll talk about all like big happenings that are going to happen all across ProRes. On that show, I I have the the uh, the December the year end episode of the long and winding Royal Road. We'll see 
me and Rich Critch from Voices of Wrestling. We're going to review, uh, Dylan, you're going to love this. We're going to review Tenru, Jinichiro Tenru versus Toshiaki Kawada for the vacant Triple Crown Championship. Oh, yeah. 2000, the, the first main, true main event of the post Exodus period of all Japan pro wrestling. And, and no surprise here, I love this fucking match. And you're going to hear all the context behind this match. You're going to hear uh, me and Rich talk about the 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 importance of this match and the the, the, the kind of the short-lived Tenru era of all Japan for wrestling before Keiji Muto comes in. I can't in. wait for this. And uh, yeah, so like uh, we've I've already recorded this. It'll be coming out at the end of of this month. Check your feeds for and all your podcast apps for whatever you're using, and you'll see uh, me and Rich Krejci from Voice of Wrestling talk about Tenru versus Kawada, Master versus Student, fucking fucking the the re- pro wrestling revolution comes together once again after about 10 year absence and uh dylan you you you, you got the love for both tenru and kawada i know absolutely always that's right and and and, and uh yeah that's it. it it's been a long show thank you guys thank you so much for staying with me for for two and a half hours i i was i was hoping not to go to this point uh, <laughs> as, as rich fan from the progressing torch would say we have broke the will cooling rule and uh, oh, that's no. okay once it once once in a while we break the cooling rule here at on post perez or the long and wide railroad but uh dylan you'll have you back on long and winding railroad in the future you too karen and back on post perez maybe one day you you'll have me on you know what you should have me on your wb show because because i'm a wb guy because phil's back there uh and uh that's right you, you can have me talk about sports entertainment if you want on one of your shows yes. and, and and karen's gonna make an the appearance door is on the always Eastern open Laird. for either of you to be on any of my shows there you go there you go well like listen i'm i'm eagerly anticipating you and karen talking about maybe stringer could be on that show too you know that'd be awesome I, i'd love to hear the three of you talk about wrestling maybe, maybe karen could get into kyushi pro so she can have uh, even keel <laughs> And Osaka Pro Wrestling, and oh, she can have an even keel uh, I don't have enough hours in the day to watch any more wrestling. I'm, I'm, I am tapped out. You, you got to keep up with, uh, with Dylan's man, my man Striga over in Germany. He watches everything. He, he watches even the the indie bullshit that I that I have no time for. But anyways, thank, thanks to you, everyone who stuck around to listen to this <laughs> whole fucking show. Thank you, thank you so much. And 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 for those of you who 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 want to send any 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 negativity, just send it my way. Okay, because I'm the master of uh, uh, spousing negativity about your favorite wrestlers and your favorite promotions because I don't give a fuck. All right, 2023 uh, could have been a better year. I, yeah, you know, I'm hoping 2024 will be will be better than this year. I honestly, I could be much worse, but then I shouldn't jinx myself as a fan that way. But until next time, for Karen, for Dylan, I will see you guys later. And until that time, goodbye.